<laughs> Good morning. Welcome to the Opie and Anthony program on XM Satellite Radio. That's right. You are listening to the pioneers of satellite radio. Sit back and enjoy. Ah, so much to do today. I don't even know where to begin. I guess we should begin by inter- introducing and saying hi to Bill Burr. What's going on? Hi, Bill. How are you? How you doing, Bill? I'm doing great. Yeah, just flew in, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Heard that. Girl dressed up like actually had somewhere to be. Yeah, yeah. I was on wear a button on, uh, shirt on this show. You don't, you don't have to impress us. Weekend, I still got the makeup on. <laughs> He came horrendous. in with, like, TV makeup, a nice black collared shirt. Yeah, Jeez. this is my I'm going to be on TV shirt. <laughs> yeah, you have one of those, too? Yeah, this is the only color I can wear on TV, too. It's got to be, like, totally black. I'm with you, I'm bro. Just horrendously pasty. Well, <laughs> we got the same they, color. They, they always, like, put the makeup on my face. They go, yeah, it looks good. Oh, ooh, look at your neck. And they get, <laughs> like, totally two-tone. Then they always forget the hands. So at any point, if I'm trying to make a point, my hands come up. It's, I look like I'm doing, like, like Fosse. <laughs> 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 Well, you were in L.A. and uh, you taped some things and then jumped on a red eye just to do our show today, right? Absolutely. Don't you learn that stuff through experience, though? You learn that from going home and watching your performance on television and going, i got to wear a darker shirt or something. I can't watch myself. You can't? Oh, uh, it's yeah. just horrendous. Every time you see, you're like, oh, God, look at the size of my head. It really <laughs> is bad to watch yourself on television. I hate That's All you, all you see is, like, the, the, the bad. All the worst things possible, you see, and it's... Uh, it's like, didn't I look in a mirror before yeah. I went on? Look how far my ears stick out. You just, <laughs> you, just, you just hate. What am I making that face for when I talk? Yeah, everybody else looks cool. I just did it with, uh, I was, uh, D.L. Hughley was, uh, uh, Bernie Mac was on. Yeah. Nice. Some girl, uh, Chelsea something or other from Tonight Show. They're like, yeah, so they're going to be on like rapid fire. So, you know, try to get something in when you, so, you know, it was almost like a change up. So I go there and they immediately talk about the hurricane. And Bernie got like all serious and shit, and Uh-oh. I got all this wacky. Yeah. What's up, what's up with New Orleans? <laughs> I'm like, well, I guess that shit's out the window. Yeah, yeah, it is a tragedy. I'm gonna make fun of the. Yeah, nice buzz kill, Jesus. <laughs> Turn around and start goofing. Yeah, I'm gonna start people bobbing up and down the water. I wasn't gonna go that far, but that's any joke at that point would have right, seen that anything. Thing, so. Can't yeah. do anything when when a comedian gets serious right yeah. in front of you. Yeah, bringing up God and stuff. I was just like, oh, no. You know, speaking of hurricanes, Hurricane Ophelia. Ooh, we're all scared. Yeah. We're it just, just got upgraded from a tropical storm. To a hurricane? <laughs> How hurricane. Cute. Does anyone Is anyone looking at this like it's really that bad? Well, hurricanes are this year's sharks. Yeah? Yeah. Well, they had the sharks were at the beginning of the summer, I remember. We went from sharks to grizzly bears for a little while. And now it's all the about the hurricanes. Yeah, because that Grizzly Man movie. And there was a few grizzly attacks. Oh, did anybody see that, by the way? They have, <laughs> they have, like, the audio of that guy just getting mauled to death. I don't think I could sit through that. Well, we were just talking about that yesterday, and uh, and I did see the movie, Bill, and they don't play the audio. Oh, they don't? No. Why wouldn't they? I don't know. They That's the big selling point in yeah, the movie. Yeah, we've of course seen really about that. It's like, why wouldn't you play the best thing? The closest they get is uh, they film a woman. Who's listening to it? And so you see her with her little headphones on, listening to the audio of the guy being killed by the bear, and her doing that is in the movie. Oh, that's great! I remember the first time I saw Exorcist. I didn't watch The Exorcist. I just watched somebody's reaction to watching it. The Exorcist. And I was like, "Wow, yeah. that's an incredible movie!" <laughs> I still what a fucking waste of film that I, is. I knew about 20 minutes into the film, I'm like, "Oh my god." They're not going to play the audio. What am I yeah. doing sitting here? You could just tell how they were setting up things and yeah. stuff. I'm like, they are not going to play the audio. And that's what the whole movie's about, that the guy had a camera rolling as a grizzly was eating him and his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. That's the whole That's the whole movie. Yeah. So it's the build up to the end. Wow. And they don't do it. You know, you ever like laugh at a really inopportune time? In a movie, and you get those looks. That would have been the ultimate moment if they were playing the audio. <laughs> somebody getting mauled. You know, no movie I did that too. About Schmidt. Oh, was that the Jack Nicholson one? Yeah, yeah. I would. I openly laughed in the theater, and I went uh, to a matinee. So what was, awful part? Uh, when he drove up to what he thought would well, he thought his uh, childhood home was still there. Oh right. After all this it was shit the happened, tire wrong, shop <laughs> where his wife died with the vacuum cleaner. Now that would have been a good place to laugh. Her her shoe kind of off on her foot, and the vacuum still going. <laughs> 
just start busting out laughing right there. So he loses his job, loses his wife, his daughter's a twat. Yeah. But he's still going to go uh, visit her, so he's driving across uh, the country, and he's he's uh, stopping at all these hot spots that meant something to him in his life. And, uh, and then uh, after all this crap, they're just building, trying to get you to cry in this movie. And then he pulls up to what's <laughs> supposed to be his childhood home. Well, it is, right? The spot was anyway. Yeah. And it's now a tire store. Yeah. I couldn't take it anymore. I just openly started <laughs> laughing. And the uh, the old ladies around me, because it was a matinee, were just pissed off. Of course they How were. How dare you? I did that in that, uh, what was it, uh, Sling Blade. Sling Blade? And that, what was the country singer who was playing the role in that? I can't oh, remember. yeah. Dwight Yoakam. Oh, yeah, Dwight yeah, Yoakam. Dwight Yoakam. Remember when he flips out at the whole family and he pushes that dude in the wheelchair yeah, yeah, yeah. right down the front Get porch? Get the fuck out of my house! Uh, <laughs> roaring. <laughs> roaring laughing. I was on a date, too. I was getting the, you know, the, the chick punches to the shoulder. Mm. That, that was a really great, funny, man. That, that's a great way to test a future girlfriend. So oh, if yeah. you could take it. Yeah, if she's not laughing with you or getting pissed off, then you know, all right, I'm moving on. Yeah, it's just like I can I can relate to I'm relating to it. Right, of course. And he laughs in Schindler's list. <laughs> oh god. I yes. pardon you. I pardon you. Yes, yeah. when he he blows that girl's brains out. Like when he goes, Jesus, he I don't know, there's some girl like one of one of the uh the concentrate concentration camp people. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Who was on a red eye? <laughs> uh, one of them there, uh, Jews there, yeah. was, uh, uh, she was bitching about something. And then the yeah. guy just sees, ah, gee, he suddenly he was getting nagged by his wife and just, just turned around. Her and in the head. Blew, I was more like amazed with like the, uh, the actor. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't know. We still laugh. Too early for that car going. crash sound I effect. I pardon you. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're just warm. Never too you. early. Ah. Hey, we got to say hi to Jim Norton. Jimmy! Stop. Can you guys hear me? Of course we can hear you. Jimmy. I can't hear you. Maybe because the air conditioner is too loud in here. Hold on a second. Isn't it like, it's isn't like, it like midnight in Los Angeles? What time is it? It's uh, 4.12 in L.A. It's, um, hold on. It's, uh, uh yeah, a little after 4. I got to go to bed because I got to get up. I, I just had to, I had to leave the apartment that I was staying in, though. Why? Uh, dude, this whole trip has been uh, just a fucking disaster. <laughs> oh, of no. course it has. Oh, Jimmy. Sound fluster. Before I leave... The last thing I said, all right, let me treat myself. I'll go out. I'll get a girl. Like, this is in New York. I go to her place. She was recommended to me by a federal police officer. He said she's great because she's a big clit. I get there. She's about 270 pounds. Um, I'm like, all right, let me just see. Well, maybe I'll do it and make the most of it because I'm leaving. We're making out. She tells me I shouldn't touch her back because she has Ben Gay on her back. Yeah. Because she has really heavy tits. So she's got Ben Gay on her back. And then she stands up and she shows me she has fat feet and she says she has legodermia. <laughs> Legodermia. Which is kind of like what Hillary has, I think, where they get fat feet. And the ankle goes right, uh, the foot goes right into the calf. Yeah, it's where, like, water collects. She's like, yeah, water collects. i got to get that fixed. So my fucking, before I leave, it's a disaster. I get here. The apartment is roach infested. i got roaches in my, in my apartment. Dude. Now, this is the apartment that you've, you've rented for how long? It's five months. Five months. You went, you looked at it. I remember you were very excited about it in Hollywood. But I didn't look. My managers looked at this one because the, oh. the, the one we wanted to look at was too much money. They 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 lied about the price. It was too much money. So this one um, we accepted. And I kind of signed for without seeing. Oh and I, no! It was fine. And I come back. I got pictures. I got video. There's fucking roaches. It was infested with cockroaches. They were in the bedroom <laughs> with the lights on. I had Holy to shit! Get out of here! Are you kidding? Dude, everything is booked in L.A. because the stupid Microsoft convention and the uh, uh, the Emmy is coming up. So every hotel is booked. I had to go into Beverly Hills. My manager got me a, a deal on, on a hotel for two nights. I, I have nowhere to stay out here. So I have no, nowhere to stay. Alone. Homeless little Jimmy. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I won't be homeless, but it just so far the trip has been an abortion, and I haven't even gone to the studio yet. What are you going to do uh, about living arrangements, though? I don't, I don't know. You got I mean, two days. Uh, what's that? You got two days. Dude, for, I know you know I gotta go to Stupid's wedding in fucking Edmonton. Um, <laughs> Rich Boss's wedding. <laughs> yeah. And I'm and I'm flying Northwest, which is declaring bankruptcy, and they've had a maintenance strike for a month. I'm, and I'm this never is, coming back. Now let me tell you, this is coming from Jimmy Norton, who only flies Continental because, as he's told everybody, youngest fleet. Yep. Yeah. They are not in bankruptcy. Yep. They do very well. And uh, he, he's very confident the, with flying that airline. Only one of two airlines not in bankruptcy, right? Yeah, it's crazy. There's Actually, the... Jim, they laid off 3,000 uh, mechanics, and they replaced them with 1,000. So Who did? Uh, Northwest. Northwest. 
Oh, okay, that's that's that, that's comforting. Though. At least they, you know, they they only cut their mechanic in, in, in force in, by by two thirds. That's fine. That's acceptable. They just got three times the work, man. Three yeah, times absolutely. the work, and they're going to go in with a smile and make sure everything's taken care of. Of course, because none of their friends got fired, you know. Oh, I'm sure they'll still do their job. <laughs> Look, my options were either that or Alaska Air, which I won't fly. Oh, boy. They have that fucking, it looks like Steve C. on the side of the plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a big, it's Steve on the tail. Yeah, that big, you know, the, 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 the cockpit recording goes, wind shear, wind shear. <laughs> pull up, pull up, pull up. <laughs> So I'm not flying uh, them, and the other one was an Air Canada flight connecting with United. So I just decided to go with Northwest. I hate United. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, so far the trip has been a nightmare. I wasn't going to call till next week. I'm like, I want to go to the wedding first. You know, I'll call next week. Right. It's just been a disaster so far. Well, did you bang that chick back here in New York? No, I could do it. I lost my rod. She was kind of turning me on when she was rubbing her breasts on my on my mule. It was kind of nice. Because the guy told me, yeah, she's dirty, she'll do anything. But then she wouldn't she wouldn't do anything without a bag. Um, I asked her if she'd just, like, lick my balls a little. She wouldn't even lick my balls. She's like, no, I don't do that. Well, I don't do that. She's a whore. Uh, well, yeah, I should have pointed that out to her, but I'd already <laughs> paid my money. It was, just, it, was, it was just a waste, and I just wanted to get out of there. She was fat, and she had a fake blonde wig on. It was just <laughs> horrendous. I th- she did, like, like, the top ten things to make a man lose his fucking heart on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my right. back smells like Ben, ben Gay. Gay. Because my breasts are too heavy. I have legodermia. How do legodermia, you and I won't legodermia. lick your balls. You're you're becoming a huge star, and this is what's happening to you, dude. I'm a fucking I'm a train wreck of a human being. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's the reality. It's like the flight was great too. Coming out was great. Yeah. Uh, I haven't slept since I, since since uh, yesterday. I haven't slept up since I flew. Uh, I'm like the flight was good. Everything was great. No turbulence. I'm like this is going way too well. The rental car. It's a brand new rental car. Fifty seven miles on it. I'm like this is just something's gonna go wrong. It, you know what? Also, it's Jimmy's. Uh, like he's going out there. It's gonna be in a series. He's it's like a dream come true. Yeah. And you probably have all these images in your head of what it's supposed to be like. And then you get out there and it just starts yeah. falling apart with He's, a roach infested apartment. It sounds like Jewel when she first got there, sleeping in her car. <laughs> it's like, dude, you <laughs> bought <Yeah>. the show. <laughs> it's not supposed to work out that way. Dude, when you tur- this is how you know you're infested with roaches. Yeah. Like when I turned the light on and I saw one on the door, that's bad because there's no wow. food source on the door. <laughs> But I like all right. Yeah, no crumbs are on the door. In. But when you have the lights on for 20 minutes and you turn the air conditioner on and you still see them walking across the floor, oh, that's wow. a problem. Yeah. When I opened the cabinet and there was one in the cabinet. Is the place uh, dirty? Is it, it like? It's an older building. Yeah. Um, and again, it's it, it's expensive by most standards, but because it's a furnished apartment and you're in LA, there's not much you can do. Um, you just got to turn the lights on, get in the middle of the room and go, I'm a fancy man. They understood that. It's like they were mocking the fancy man before that. <laughs> Dude, it was awful. And I know this woman's not going to want to give me my money back. It, it's going to be a problem. So I paid like one month and then a month deposit. So I know I'm going to get fucked for that money. Nah. It, this is just turning into be an, an awful trip. I'm, I'm hoping the script is very funny. I saw the script. That's the only good thing. Uh, good. Are you, uh, do you have video of these cockroaches? Yeah, I did it with my camera because I know this bitch is not going to want to give my money back. So I took photogra- horrible photographs of the little fellas. And I, I have a video of like three of them on my, on my, my camera. Like just shit video. But I have that. And I have one of, uh, in, in the bedroom on the rug. I mean, why, when you see cockroaches in a bedroom that's got the lights on on the rug, you're completely infested. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Because I was going to stay for the night. I'm like, maybe they're just in the kitchen. It oh, to... dude, they'd be crawling on you. Yeah, I know. Or they'd, just, yeah, or they'd be on crawling the Crawling in and out of your mouth, seeing if there's food in there. It, yeah, was, I, I, it was all a furnished apartment? Yeah, which I don't like the idea of to begin with. Oh, what about the bed? Did you look at the mattress? No, it was okay. It was. It looked like it was a decent bed. I didn't even lay in it, though. Did you, did you, were sheets on it, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, did you look underneath and look what the mattress looks like? No, I didn't get that. Dude, part. you gotta look. There's probably stains and roaches and, ugh. Well, I should have known better. When, when like I was told there was like a fast de- uh, like a, an internet connection and I get there and I go to her house to sign the paperwork and she hands me a box and says here's your DSL so uh. I, had to, I had to fucking hook my own DSL up and of course it didn't work I call the DSL people they say this phone number is registered <laughs> to somebody with a different address it was just the whole ah uh, clusterfuck yeah I would love yeah, to hear the audio exactly. of him doing that oh fucking my god yeah, yeah, yeah why are you oh, so calm right now Jimmy 
because we know you. He's I, exhausted. And because and then, and then and then to and then to top it off, I have fucking fat Bob calling me to tell me that it, it was nothing but chicks who wanted to put their pussies on a face, anyone's face. I didn't want to. I didn't even yeah, want to tell you about this. Yeah, Yesterday, I heard about it. Bobby told me, and I heard part of the replay in the car. We it, it's the first time since we've been on the air that we had the type of action in this studio that yeah. we got yesterday. We weren't able whenever Jimmy's here and girls come in, we are barely able to get them to get down to a bra and panties. Never mind wowing or taking their t pants off. Nothing. We get nothing from girls that come in here. Yesterday, Jimmy's gone one day. We get three girls more that were in here. There were like five girls, but sure. three of the girls, all the girls got naked. Three of them decide they want to try the wiffle ball back challenge <laughs> and take the wiffle ball back comes down the first time in a year and they lube it up and one by one there they go shoving it right in them five girls completely naked in the studio for i don't know close to an hour then a lesbian show that was just <laughs> right. box eating at its best and we're like uh, bob kelly is just sitting on a chair uh with one of these chicks on his lap massaging her tits it's just it's just <laughs> and that would have been jimmy yeah, that's great. But instead, I'm doing a great impression of a Puerto Rican in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you poor son of a bitch. Uh, dude, it's just, it really is awful. What was the name of that escort service that you got the, the Ben Gay waterlogged it a, woman It wasn't from. a service. It was this guy I talked to online, who's, a, who's actually a cool guy who I like, but um, he recommended this one to me. He's like, yeah, she's cool. She had a big clit. And she did have a big clit. Um, Maybe it was like a bait and switch thing that was happening. Mm. No, because I've seen a picture of her before. It was her, but the way she took the photo, she kind of like was laying out with like a long flowing thing, so you can't see what a fatso she is. She kind of hit it really well, you know. But yeah, I can't, I can't blame her for that. that I kind of knew she was going to be a fucking blimp, and I still went. I just didn't realize how fat she'd be. That's like on MySpace. Whatever photo they use, everybody looks good looking. So what you do is you click on more photos, and then you see, like... Then you got to see the real deal, because they're yeah. going to put the best photo possible. Yeah, because if you're ugly, you got you got one good one. One good one in you, of course. Everyone, Everyone has one, one in them. Poor yeah, Jimmy. Can't... He's like that. He's like the uh, the young girl from the Midwest that goes out to L.A. <laughs> to go in movies, yeah. and she gets there and, like, is met by a pimp at the bus, Plus, and she's just getting fucked in the ass a week later. <laughs> yeah, that pretty much is what it's like. I had stars in my eyes. And, yeah. It's just it's, got it's, off the Greyhound. Yeah, gets off the Greyhound bus. He's walking down Hollywood Boulevard, looking at the stars on the sidewalk. <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> it's an awful <laughs> montage. Yeah, I can <laughs> see the montage. I see the montage in my head, and there he is in his cockroach-infested apartment. Yeah. Jim looking up at the Hollywood sign. Yeah, uh, yeah, I made it. Looking right, at right, Bilbo. Right, right at the end of the song, some homeless guy says something a little mean to foreshadow. Right, the right. The roaches and shit that he's going to see in the next he, hour. He looks up at one of the many billboards in Los Angeles, and he, you see his face get superimposed on someone's face up there. <laughs> <laughs> it's all excited. Hey, Jimmy, you missed Harry Reams yesterday. Yeah, I know. I, 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 Yoshi told me, so it was good. I missed, I missed the chicks fucking each other with cucumbers, and I missed a porn legend while yeah. I was running around stepping on roaches with my fucking fat right boot. That guy had a hell of a story to tell yesterday. Is he, is he doing real estate in Utah? Yeah. Yeah. He's wow. a real estate agent. Imagine you, buying your house from Harry Reams. Yeah. You, you can see it in his eyes. He's barely holding on. He's been clean and sober 16 years. He's married. We could have knocked him off that wagon so quickly. Yeah. What do you think of the chicks? He he was the one that got him naked. We we thought the girls were were just going to hand out wow stickers and they weren't, you know, up for anything. The second and, they walked in, he's like, "Let me see something. Let me see a little." Like yeah, he, yeah. he turned he turned in a second. Yeah. And really? uh, one of the girls flashed uh she was wearing a skirt with no panties and pulled oh. her Pulled her oh. skirt up and and flashed the vag right at him and he goes oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah yeah we could have him drinking easily <laughs> back in porno his mustache was growing back <laughs> that big seventies porno stash yeah he was definitely barely holding on did she have a nice one a nice meaty one uh, all of them had uh, nice meaty uh, vages of course they did. loved it of course they they did. all had of fine course. parts Jimmy <laughs> one girl she was uh, Korean and Jewish that's and right and she got up on the console and put her ankles be behind her head. And it, it just, it looked like uh, an explosion at the Steakums factory. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. The, the one day I'm not there, the first day, first day. I fucking leave. That's I what we were saying. Shit karma. Uh, Jimmy, one of the girls had a nickname. What was it? Uh, Cock Hog. Yeah. She self-proclaimed herself Cock, cock hog. hog. She goes, yeah, that's why I, I'm, I'm a Cock Hog. 
<laughs> Dude, you I, aren't I, in I, here I, when cock hog is. That's you were, even disgusting for a porn star. Yeah. You, you were taking pictures of cockroaches, and we were hanging out with cock, cock hog. hog. Yeah. I'm a cockroach hog, and you got cock hog. <laughs> cock hog. Yeah, so. So, well. Uh, so we miss you, Jimmy. Well, you can rest assured, I miss you, too. <laughs> do you yeah. understand? I haven't even done a table read. and I, I really do want to just leave. I'm like, I can't. Oh, no. I, I'm looking forward to doing this, but just the fact that that stupid asshole has to get married in northern Canada. What? Because he's pussy whipped. He, why would you do that? Why you would you don't. drag your friend up there? You don't. It's inconveniencing your friend and uh, loved ones. Well, Dude, I really wish I had something else to do so I could just say, no, I can't. Well, you got to get married where the, the girl uh, lives, though. So. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, man. That's the deal. What's that's the deal? That's what the mean? deal. That's it's what not the deal. Most of the time. It's the United States of America. That's where you get married and divorced. I, I, how many of you... Yeah, uh, someplace cool like Italy. Yeah, they, if you're going to go somewhere else, you don't go to Canada. Is that even legal down here? Is he really married if you get married in Canada? Uh, I don't know if it holds up. Don't you have to be married in the United States? Good question. Of course it is. Smelling horses. All right, Jimmy. It sounds like you're yeah. off to a great start there in Hollywood. Yeah, man. I gotta sleep because I gotta. I gotta go to wardrobe tomorrow. Ask for the ring, and a hockey player slap shoots it up the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid Canada. Stupid Canada. <laughs> <laughs> well, we look forward to the stories from Rich Voss's wedding. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be good. I'm gonna try to tape, um, my, you know, some of it if I can. Oh, the toast if you can, please. Are you yeah. gonna send the pictures of the cockroaches in so we can yeah, all yeah, check I, it out? I should, well, yeah, I didn't have a, a connection. Um, I should get that in for you sometime later today. But I got to shower now and and go to bed and get up by like twelve. Is it true that when they want the couple to kiss at Voss's wedding, uh, everybody walks up to Rich with their fork and taps on his teeth? Cling, 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 cling. <laughs> that oh, wow. fool. All right, with that, Jim, we'll let you be. Uh, uh. All right, Jimmy, please take care of yourself out there. Well, you know what it is? I, I, I think that they were telling Oprah they had, that they had to get me out of here. Yeah, well, you know, Ben ran in and he said, uh, you know, we got to move on. we got other things to do today. So. All right, guys. Yeah, we got to let you go. <laughs> we got to let you go, Jimmy. Oh, you, and, and, and you should let me be. All right, Billy, have a good time. Unless call. you want to talk to, uh, wait, we got Steve from Yellowstone on the <laughs> other phone if you want to. <laughs> Ramon, bring me a Spix resident. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jimmy. All right, right, Jimmy. Take care, man. All right, later. All right. Oh, the poor guy. I know. Oh, I feel bad for him. He's out there taping the HBO uh, show there. You know, for everything but the Scientology story. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that's coming. I'm sure that's coming. He, he, you know what it is? He's such a pervert, and he can be such a prick. But alone out there, he's such a vulnerable little guy. He sounded like Woody Allen. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know what to do. He is like Woody <laughs> he Allen. Is, yeah. He doesn't know what to do. Cockroach infested. He should. And you know something? Jimmy knows better. I don't know how the hell he rented a place without looking at it, knowing Jimmy. He you doesn't know. do that stuff. Well, he does things last minute, though, so yeah. he had no choice in the matter. He's excited. It was part of the montage. Yeah, part of the montage. <laughs> Oh, the poor bastard. Hand the keys, him. shaking the hand, thumbs yeah, up. Yeah, thumbs up. <laughs> a gleam in his eye. All right. Uh, I got to get a cup of coffee. You want some coffee, Bill? Uh, we got I'm good. I got OJ and <laughs> some We got water. a Starbucks machine here, though, now. Yeah. I, I never got into coffee, man. You're not a coffee guy? It's dirty water. Burns my tongue. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> All right. We're going to take a, a quick break. We got Bill Burr in studio today. We, we want to replay your uh, OzFest PSAs. Oh, okay. We can't get yeah, enough of that. Those. Also, we found uh, Celine Dion and Larry King. we got to play this for you because you were talking about celebrities in the hurricane. We'll get into that after the break. Okay. It's crazy. We got audio of uh, one of these reporters in the middle of Hurricane Ophelia. We'll get to that in a few minutes. And when we get back, I guess we got to talk about the assault on the media that happened in Boston. Uh, I'll just say, I think we have a leader. A leader of the month, and this could be the winner. No one's going to beat this assault on the media in Boston. It's brutal. <laughs> it's really, really good. All right, you're checking out the Opie and Anthony program. In studio today, Bill Burr. Don't forget to watch Bill Burr tomorrow night on HBO, baby. Nice. Your half-hour right. comedy special airs tomorrow, right? Yes. Very, very cool. that doesn't do anything for my career, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill myself. I'm making that promise. <laughs> I'm going to leap off a comedy club rooftop. <laughs> leap twist, off the Hyatt next to the uh, comedy store. Twist store. my ankle, limp in, and do the third show. <laughs> What's you, up, Wichita? <laughs> yeah, you guys have like a roller coaster type of life. You got the big highs. You've been doing a lot of TV lately. Oh, yeah. 
And you got the HBO thing tomorrow night, and then what? And then it goes back down to some club in the middle no, of nowhere, I got right? I got this show all next week, and then after that, then I'm at, like, uh, I don't know, Assumption College. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's going to be, like, in, like, a cafeteria. You know the worst is those college gigs where they, they would... They would put you in the cafeteria at like 12 noon. Not only is it 12 noon and it's broad day, daylight, which is like fucking kryptonite yep. to comedy, they wouldn't even have any posters. No one had any clue a show was even, was even going to happen. <laughs> oh, All of a sudden, man. they would just come up, and they'd always fuck up the intro by you saying your name first. Yeah. You want to say the name last, so you go, and here's Bill Burr. They'd be like, we have a comedian. His name's Bill Burr. <laughs> He's been on Comedy Central. <laughs> <laughs> and here he is. And then you just walking up and no clap. People just looking up. No oh, clap. God the, oh. damn. Because you got to train the audience. They got to know when to clap. And usually it is with the big end. Let's hear it for Bill Burr. They had no idea Nothing. there's even a show. That's one of those things you're just saying to yourself as they're bringing you up. You're just going, okay, in, uh, in an hour, I'm going to be in my car. Right, right. <laughs> driving away from this nightmare. You don't even think about what you have to do in the next oh, few yeah. minutes. It's like an hour from now, I'm going to be driving. The worst one I this ever had, over. I, I was in Kansas, some fucking awful place in the middle of Kansas. And it's like when you do a nooner, it's like you have to be totally on. You got to have like mm -hmm. the set of your life just to, just to get minimal response. Right. And I was fucking completely off. And there was like 20 kids spread out on this one table of black kids. So I'm like, oh, fuck. I just go up there, and they just start giving me shit, and I'm bombing, and I'm sweating. At one, oh, one point, I'm literally trapped in my act, like not even addressing the fact that I'm bombing. And what's up with computers? Those are crazy, aren't they? Just like echoing off this fucking cafeteria. And at one point, this black kid walks by. I swear to God, he couldn't have been more than like two inches from my face, just walks by me and just goes, ah! <laughs> and I just kept walking, and I and I had no comeback. Dude, the oh. the fucking rage that was going through me when I left oh, that sure. place, just screaming at my windshield. I'm not fucking doing these anymore. These are fucking bullshit. Blowing out my uh -huh. voice. Uh -huh. uh, oh, it was the oh, worst. That is We're bad. gonna say that a hundred times today now. Uh -huh. Oh, is that bad? Oh, it was uh, one of the most more <laughs> humiliating moments. Yeah. I really don't know how you guys do it. Stand-up comics are like a holdover from vaudeville or something. You guys are just out on the road, going to these shithole little places. Who there, does that? There's no, res there's that? no respect for comics either. I saw no. It. They were doing a review of that Pamela Anderson roast. Right. And they were talking how crazy they got it. And they were like, it wasn't even like, you know, Tommy Lee or any of that. It was the, it was the bitter comedians, these, these show business lifers. I've never heard of that. Oh. Who would go, and then they, they have like three lines from like really good comics, which are hilarious. They never think that maybe roasting somebody is a skill. Right, right. And they, they think that these guys are really bitter about Pamela Anderson making it like she's taking their fucking roles on. And that's what makes them get up there and say that shit. Not that, you know, they wrote it, thought it up. Yeah, and all these other tools are reading off of a teleprompter. Right. Show business lifer. I never lifer. even heard that expression. That's again, you're just trapped, like you said, trapped in your act. Uh, you're a life, you're trapped in that life, never getting out. <laughs> Dude, don't cruel. paint it that way. I'm going to get out. <laughs> He's gonna get I'm, out. Getting cruel, I'm getting man. out, man. He's got a big hit tomorrow night. Bill Burr, HBO, his half hour comedy special. I got nowhere else to go. Tomorrow night on HBO. I got nowhere else to go. I got nothing. Let's say hi to Blind Dave. <laughs> Call him from Boston. Blind Dave. Hey, man. What's up, bro? Just reporting. Uh, I didn't see it, but I heard it. Blind Open Anthony XM Satellite Radio. Oh, the assault on the media that Fox happened in Boston 25. last night. Fox 25, yes. I wanted to explain uh, Blind Dave to Bill Burr, though. Ah, yes. Blind Dave has done a lot of great things for our show. He's legally blind. You can barely see, right? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing. You, you see maybe some some shadows, right? <laughs> yeah. We we actually had him... Um... You're retarded, right? Come on. Uh, <laughs> try, to, try to read something. <laughs> Tell him how retarded you are. i got to renew my license next month. Uh, already? Yeah, it's four years. It has been four years since Holy he got his Connecticut uh, license. Easy, easy. It's all right. They won't know where. He, uh, he yeah. got his driver's license renewed for us. Oh, he Cause we... figured it all out, how to walk up. There's no up. eye test. There's no eye test. So he figured out how to memorize things and, and just kind of went up there and convinced the person that he could see. He had a friend with him, helping him along, making believe he had a, like injured leg or something. I lost my glasses in a car wreck. Oh, that's what it was, right. <laughs> so he lost his glasses, and they gave him a driver's license. The he, guy's blind. He was able to figure out where to stand for the picture and everything. 
Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So, and then uh, we had him do blind boxing where he got his ass kicked. <laughs> How many ribs did he break? I think four. I don't know. Yeah, he cracked or broke four ribs, and he. Who did he fight? Another, another blind, blind guy, guy that popped his eyes out before he fought. This guy Matt. I when you see two blind guys back to back throwing punches <laughs> forward, it, it is the funniest goddamn thing ever. That's the you, problem. You have that back. on DVD. Oh you yeah, own that. yeah, we got video. Yeah, we, let's get the video back up on FoundryMusic.com. That'll get a lot of hits today, Steve. And then when somebody, because we we didn't have a ring, all we had was a ring of people really standing around. Uh, watching. Whenever anybody in the crowd made a noise, was this in Gangs of New York? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you give them like gardening tools to smash each other with? <laughs> they couldn't. They couldn't see each other, obviously. So whenever anyone in the crowd made a noise, like both blind guys would go lunging at the person with a fist flying. <laughs> a few spectators got punched right in the face. I got punched. Yeah, they bump pathetic. into somebody in the crowd uh, yeah. and turn around and just wail at him. Yeah, I'd have to think there's not a lot of jabs thrown in a No, fight not like a lot that. of jabs. But, but we found a Roundhouse. ringer. Roundhouse. We found a ringer, this blind Matt. He popped his eyes out and just beat the crap out of Blind Day. <laughs> just <laughs> destroyed him. Bruised Bruce, his kidney. His spleen. spleen. Bruised his spleen. He was in trouble. How many rounds did it go? Like three or f I don't know. Three? Four? I think it was three. Yeah, like three rounds. <laughs> I got beat up by him and a bottle of Jack Daniels. Oh, yeah, you were real drunk. <laughs> he was smashed. <laughs> he was drunk also. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but the scary thing is we'd ring the bell, and they would be slowly moving around the room trying to figure out where they were going to punch, and they'd be, like, <laughs> it was saying trying to listen for unsure feet. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> but, and they would just be punching the air in front of them, and then as soon as there was any, like Ann said, he's explained the whole Anything. thing. Anything. Any contact, and then all hell would break loose. And then we'd have to stop the fight for a little while. E Rock putting up links to video as we speak to blind boxing. Good. So blind Dave, you you heard the assault on the media up there, huh? Yeah, I was like half falling asleep, and all of a sudden I just heard XM Satellite Radio, Opie Anthony. <laughs> it was pretty good from a audio point. I don't know what it looked like though. Oh, it looks great because uh, I guess some some of the uh, people that were with the reporter got involved. Oh no tried way! Tried to get tried to get the people holding the sign up. Um, out of the way. Right. Well, tackled him. The video's up on opianthony.com, foundrymusic.com. We should get Steven here. He knows all about this one. Mm -hmm. But right, I, I saw it quickly before he went on the air. Thanks, Blind Dave. Punch it out. Later. And the reporter's doing some stupid story about, I don't even know, uh, sweeping or something? Yeah. And all of a sudden, a huge Opie and Anthony sign uh, appears from the distance, and the guy's running full speed right at the reporter, screaming, Opie and Anthony. Hey, Steve. <laughs> oh. Whoa! Come on. Set her down. Oh, nice yeah. landing hey, today. Nice. Thank you. Right on the no, seat. Like a little that. bit more room. Look at that. Little... You're, you're learning how to use your hybrid better. Well, it's you know it's it's hard to navigate in these tight spaces. Fagmobile. <laughs> it's not a fagmobile. I don't know where you're getting this from. So uh, this was a great assault on the media last night, huh? It really was. It really was. We're, we're hoping that they can send some better video in, but you really get a clear idea of what they're doing. They went after. Um, I think her name is Bianca De La Garza. She's a, Ooh, a reporter for Fox 25 like up in Boston, and they were doing a story from uh, the Beacon Hill section. And these maniacs, you can just see this angry mob coming in from the background as she starts the story. <laughs> I see that. First of all, it looks like just people just walking on the sidewalk way in the distance. But no, these guys are ready to do the assault on the media. And then they go from a walk to a full run with a yeah. huge Opie and Anthony sign. They're screaming. Yeah, spin that screen around a little bit. She's doing a story on, on snow finds. Something weird. Oh, like... now you've done it. Oh, good oh, one, Dan. Oh, he's Christ. turning the monitor around and he shuts it off. What'd you do? There it is. All right, so all right, he's going to back up the uh, video. I know this is radio, but you can find the video for yourself on opianthony.com. Here's the latest assault on the media. A story on snow finds, I guess. On Fox what? 25 in Boston. You see the thugs walking. There's like four of them. Oh, in the background. You see that? Yeah, they're, they're walking. walking up. Oh, she's showing us how to sweep. Thanks. And here they sweep. come, screaming, Opie and Anthony XM Satellite Radio. Then the one guy has a huge Opie and Anthony sign. Who's the guy that tackled him? Uh, is, is a thug from Fox. A thug from a Fox thug. didn't yeah, well, officially what... tackle him, but he blocked him. To... He blocked him, but you know what it did? It took him out of commission. But the other guy, that's with the sign guy, right. had a sticker, and he ran right up. And that guy is, one... um, that's uh, that's Meat Bosoms from, uh, from the, the guy that went after Dan Housley.
Not really? the meat bosom. <laughs> yeah, the meat bosom. Holy meat crap. Bosom. I, th- I, th- I think he calls himself. Hog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we love the names here. Of course. We don't like real names anymore. I think he calls himself Sonny Forelli, but I, I don't want to mess up his name. Well, mm-hmm. we got Sonny Forelli oh, on maybe hold. That's it. We got okay. Boston Strangler on hold. It's kind of funny. Uh, each city has their has their people that are attempting yeah. assaults on the media. There's like a whole gang in Buffalo. There's yep. a gang in Boston. Bunch of people in New York. And these guys are relentless because they j- they just go after the, the the news crews the second they see them. They must walk around with the stickers and the signs. I was gonna say, how the hell do they know? I mean, how do you know that they're gonna do this sweeping story? You and where they're gonna do it? And yeah, yeah I mean, how the hell? Either you live centrally located to where a lot of these news stories are going on, or you're just driving around constantly looking for news. Trials. But you have the sign and everything on. They you? must. They must travel with well, the sign with them. These guys set up the shot a, a good hour or two before they actually do it. So all you have to do is drive by and see, yeah, the news truck, and you know s- something is happening in your neighborhood. That is a I don't slow think I've ass ever seen thing. them setting up a shot. No, yet. really. Maybe a couple times in Times Square, but I don't know. Yeah. Where. And they also have a very obvious pattern. If they're doing a story at noon, they're going to do the same story at 5, and the same story at 6, and the same Maybe story at Maybe they have, like, a, they have a scanner. Oh, they, they have, have a police scanner. scanner. Yeah, you got a police scanner. It'd be easy to <laughs> Let's find. roll. Oh, really? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> they, uh, they, what a slow news day in Boston. They're reporting on wiping snow off of your car and parking in the snow. It's, it's, it's September. Middle of September. Stupid Boston. I guess they're done with the Hurricane Katrina thing. Time to move on. <laughs> yeah. More important things. Well, let's say hi to Sonny Forelli. Sonny! Hey, how you guys doing, man? That was your assault on the media? Absolutely. And i got to tell you guys, it's a lot hotter than what you guys explain it to be. Really? Yeah. Walk, oh, us, yeah. walk us through uh, assault on the media. Well, I can't really get into too much details, but let's put it this way. It does take about an hour and a half to two hours of preparation before it actually happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all you got? Well, I, he doesn't want to give I, away his... I can't, I can't really get into details, guys. I mean, but, uh, all right. but I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. Um, this is the second time I actually hit Bianca. Yeah. The first time was a botched uh, attempt over in Foxborough Stadium, and, and I was on private property, and I knew it. And, I, and those guys over at Fox, they actually get to know me pretty well, uh, which makes it even more hotter because they actually got my picture posted up at the studio. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, Sonny yeah. Pirelli's been doing a lot of assaults on the media up there in Boston. A lot of botched attempts, but finally he scored big time last night. So, Sonny, you, you're, uh, you found out somehow that they were doing a live shot. Yeah, well, first of all, they were doing a gay thing uh, right down the street in Be- uh, at Beacon Hill uh, because, you know, the gay marriage thing. And I thought I was going to be able to get a shot there. And then I realized those those knuckleheads were doing another shot right by the studio, which made it even more hotter. Uh-huh. So, you know, I just kind of hung around there in the dark alley somewhere, and Boston Strangler landed up meeting up with me, and he was the one who actually was holding the sign. Oh, he and was I the guy. Started... Wait, wait, which, uh, he was holding the big Opie and Anthony sign? Yeah, and what happened was we started going from the sidewalk, and we started running towards him, and the camera guy tried to stop me. I think he had a better chance stopping a Mack truck, to tell you the truth. Yep. Yeah. And, but he did stop uh, Boston Strangler for a little while, he and, actually, and that allowed he actually, you to run toward the camera with the, the, the Wow Opie and Anthony bumper sticker. Right, that was me. All right, uh, got but it all they, figured out. They actually, they actually escorted Boston Strangler away from the picture. Yeah, but he got to sign in, and there's a huge commotion behind the reporter. And I got to give her credit; she didn't even flinch. She no. continued with her story. Did man. her story like nothing was happening. She didn't turn around and say, "What the fuck is your problem?" <laughs> like no. Mike Myers standing next to Kanye West. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you think the control booth is telling them, you know, keep keep cool, keep cool? You got a bunch of guys behind you. No, I think they're what? just looking, going, "Don't upset her. Just let her roll through this. She's a professional." Hey, Boston yeah, String. Those, those four guys. It had nothing to do with the shot. They were actually walking up the street. We're, we're, we're using them as cover. You know what else is great? The shot turns into some kind of MTV TRL shot. Like the camera's moving. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those, like, you know, young, hip MTV cameramen tilting the camera. Yeah, They're trying man. everything they can do to keep the uh, right. to keep the sign out of the shot. I had no idea that you, you guys used those four guys as cover. So it's only two of you guys. Yes. Oh, you got it. You got to see the video. Using innocent bystanders as cover. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So Meat it's, shields. It's on opianthony.com. Boston Strangler. Hey, what's going on, Opie? Uh, yeah, basically what happened was Sonny gave me a call last night. He said, dude, uh, I'm down here on Beacon Hill. We got a, uh, an assault on the media going down. Originally, I was going to spot for him, but because I looked so damn close, I jumped in my car and just flew down there. 
And basically what happened is we ducked right behind the church. And as these, you know, four guys were walking out, Sonny got the okay to go up there and, you know, hit the uh, news reporter, not hit them, you know, literally. So we ran up there. Sonny managed to get by. I got taken out by this huge thug. And I then see he, that. He drags me, like, by my arm, and he starts telling me, not today, not now. And uh, meanwhile, Sonny... <laughs> Why, such an important get, story yeah. they were doing? <laughs> yeah, they're talking about sweeping up snow. <laughs> no, today is the day we Not this it. story, fella. Not on my watch. <laughs> Have some respect. <laughs> not on my watch. <laughs> he got hit bad, bro. Go ahead. Go ahead, Boston. So <laughs> the thug. You know, yeah. Sonny got in there. He managed to get it out, and I get dragged off looking like a little beaten schoolgirl or whatever. Not at all, man. You got the sign in the shot big time. Then you get uh, manhandled and, and pushed out of the shot, and then uh, Sonny comes running right toward the reporter with the, the wow uh, sticker yelling and screaming. It was perfect. We, we got assaulted doing an assault on the media. That's right. You certainly did. I, I got the audio for the people that uh, aren't watching the video right now. Yes, we're very happy to say that, but you know, David, it is coming, and I'm, I'm sorry to see the bearer of bad news, but folks, remember these, the good old shovel and broom, but we're going to have to get real familiar with these, with that, because if you don't see that you're part of the Definitely uh, worth taking a look at the video just to see the pandemonium <laughs> that was going on. I, I, I go home to, uh, that night, uh, last night, and my wife's in the, in the uh, living room. She turns around and says, uh, uh, my 12-year-old boy came down running down I, I saw Daddy on TV. I saw Daddy on TV. <laughs> It's great. We need a better copy of the video. The the copy we got up on Foundry is pretty good, but you have uh, a twelve year old. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> wow. I thought it was just uh, some high school on a college. Uh, Bill, we're used to hear that. That's why we just went with it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. He has a twelve year old. So my grandson comes in. That is scary. Oh. I'm trying to explain it, which made it more harder. <laughs> Hey, I'm punched out before I put my foot in the mouth more. All right, guys, it was a great assault on the media. I think you're, no, you're definitely in the lead for the assault on the media contest for September. Listen, what's up for grabs this month, guys? A portable Delphi MiFi radio. Dinner with our own E Rock at Paisano's of Mulberry Street in the heart of Little Italy. Fantastic. Uh, 30 days free video game rental from Gamefly.com. And finally, admission to the Opie and Anthony Show studios to watch the show live through a glass partition. In a hazmat suit. <laughs> yeah, they get to sit out there and watch the show through uh, the glass. <laughs> like it's an operating theater for students to learn how to do the latest uh, medical yeah. techniques. And then at the end of the show, we'll take a picture with you. What the hell? Sometimes. <laughs> I, I have to leave very quickly after the show. Boston Strangler. Yeah. Great job, buddy. Yep. Thank you very much. I take would care, say guys. Uh, those right. guys are in the lead. All right, yeah, definitely. Botched attempt on private property. Botched attempt. I almost got her once in Foxborough. <laughs> I like how that other guy becomes a thug. Like yeah. What they're doing is legal. Right, right. And then this thug comes in. This thug, the nerve of him. The nerve of this security. <laughs> oh, man. We love the assault on the media thing. So check out the video on opianthony.com. Also, I just was handed a note. The uh, blind boxing is up for your viewing pleasure. There you go. On opianthony.com and foundrymusic.com. <laughs> All right. Very nice. Bravissimo. A <clears throat> couple of people want to comment. Paul from Chicago, what's up? Yeah, how you doing? Hey. Hey, man. Uh, I'm in Chicago, and these uh, pricks from Fox News do the same damn show every morning. It's the uh, Fox Chicago morning show. They put on these gimmicks, these acts, jugglers, you know, line dancers, whatever they can think of. Yeah. And, uh, it's pretty obnoxious, but it's the same time every morning. So I don't know if everybody's listening from Chicago, but if you're planning an assault of the media, it's probably a good time to do it. They do it in, uh, I think, the corner of uh, Michigan Avenue and, uh, uh, let's see, let's see, Lake Street, maybe, Mi Lake in Michigan. There you go. Bill, we have pests everywhere. We have yeah. pests everywhere. Nationwide. Just, just looking for that opportunity. Just right, sitting it's, it's and waiting. It's a show. Awesome. There's no reason to put it on except that they have nothing else to report on in Chicago, so they just put on these stupid gimmick acts. Right. Uh, anybody who's anybody with an act can go on there and just, uh, hey, I got something. Yeah, I'd like so. to see an assault on the media in Chicago. <laughs> that would be nice. Be some I'll try awful to work on news it. to All watch. Right. All right. Plate spinners. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> plate spinners. Yeah. Yeah, we got a guy who's going to spin some plates up here on a stick. <laughs> it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> Andy, what's up? 
Good morning, gentlemen. How's it going? All right. Hi. Hey. Uh, I would suggest that everybody that wants to do an assault in the media watch that one. It was uh, it was beautifully diagrammed. If you do it with two people, you always have one person that has to sacrifice their body when the big thug comes. <laughs> that, guy guy took, that guy took the guy out with the sign last night, something fierce. I was sitting watching with my wife. I'm laughing my ass off. <laughs> and my wife just looks at me going, that's not funny. <laughs> yeah, it said, is. Yes, yeah, it, it is. is. Oh, certainly funny. Fucking broads. They don't and get it. it. <laughs> They're just anti fun. The, they the are. End, when uh, when uh, he, he's right on top of Bianca with the uh, sign and the camera starts doing that MTV thing, she kind of looks down to the corner and winces. And then they go to the serious story. The whole thing was, the, the whole story after that was that I guess a big sheet of ice fell off a truck on uh, the Mass Pike and went through some poor lady's windshield and, like, took her eye out and broke her jaw and all that. Weird. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> no. Uh, that's, uh, but, yeah, they should definitely diagram it. All right. Have one guy take it, and uh, that's about it. All right. Yeah, Jesus. Have a wonderful day. All I know is the assaults on the media are getting smarter and better as we move on, so. That More. sounds like a real topical news story, ice blowing off a car on the Mass Pike. It's yeah. it's summer. What the hell's going on? What the fu- what what are they what are they talking about? Last year? I have no idea. All right, let's go to New Jersey. Fuck Brad, what's going on? Thanks. Hey guys, what's <laughs> happening? Hey. Um, I just heard some disturbing news from Howard this morning already. He claims first off that he would never deny anybody a job anywhere he works. Then he has the balls to say that when serious management came to him, they said Opie and Anthony want to work here. Andrew Dice Clay wants to work here. And Howard says he gave a textbook answer by saying, yeah, that's fine. I don't care. I don't care. Truth of the matter is, we were hired here before he was hired there. He's, he's just a we dude. had a job here before uh, he was hired at Sirius. So w- w- what kind of discussions were going on? We were employed. It was, the deals were done. First of all, people, you know, he was bitching that uh, a, a, another station took his show off the air. So then they got into talking about the the little doggy station, and, and, and that's one of the things that came up. And, of course, Bubba Bucktooth, he was like, yes, yes, boss, that's right, boss. I was totally kissing his ass. It's just yeah, annoying. I, I feel really, really sorry for Bubba the Love Sponge that he had to go yeah. and kiss Howard's ass to get back uh, on the radio. You know something? Thanks a lot, um, but uh, we uh, we've had the experience of working for the same company that Howard works for. It's no treat. Let well, me tell why, you that that's one. Why, that's why I couldn't believe he said it. And I had to hop on the horn right away and notify you guys. You think you think Thank if you, Bubba thinks it was uh it was a bad thing having Clear Channel up his ass uh, as far as content goes and what he's doing on his show, just wait until Stern starts micromanaging his other stations and uh, telling these guys what they should or shouldn't be doing. Oof! What a fucking nightmare that would be. Thank you, no. Mike in Jersey, what's up? And that guy before me won to, uh, he stole my thunder. I was going to say the same thing that douchebag Stern came on the air and he was whining and bitching about, uh, how, uh, he's getting thrown off the air in Columbus and the uh, program director came on and gave a big, uh, a big spiel about it. I guess he didn't prepare for a show today again, so it's uh, well. He's just he just phoned it in. I just wish YSP would throw him off the fucking air down here. All right. In a matter of time there, buddy. All right. All right. Thank you. Rob on Long Island. What's up, Rob? Yeah, I heard the same damn thing. That hook knows. He's, he's a, awful. He's a liar. We could have went to either Sirius or XM. Hmm. We went here. It oh is kind of, you know, it's, I'm though, it is kind of nice to know if we fuck up, we got one more place to go. Uh. This guy, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was going to drive off the road when he said that you guys wanted to go to Sirius. Wait a minute. Uh, last time I checked, you guys have been on XM for a year. No, nah, you know what? We were lucky enough to be able to choose between the two companies, and uh, sorry, but XM is a, the much better company. So, Mama! <laughs> so, so stupid us, we decided to go with the better company. Mama! <laughs> <laughs> For once in our lives, we made a smart decision. We went to went to the better company. Mama! <laughs> Bobby in Brooklyn. What's up, Bobby? Hey, what's Best up, Paul? Hey, uh, ever. basically the same story. You know, I was on there fucking crying this morning. But, uh, I mean... Well, he cries and bitches ever. when he doesn't have a show to do. Yeah, that's So true. he goes into that old barrel like, well, I didn't prepare for, uh, for a show, because why should I at this point? So I'll just spend my time bodies, bitching man. about you the FCC, bitching about my, uh, what? You guys gonna throw any bodies in New York? 
I need a good party to go to. <laughs> I was just about to give you a really good rant, That's sir. That's what happens. All right. Why don't we uh, say hi to Jennifer? we got to bring the fun back into the show here. Jennifer in Texas. What's up, Jennifer? Hello. Hey. Hi. Hi. I wanted to play What's in My Pants. Whoa. <laughs> I like the Another sound of this. You know something? Another game we haven't played in a long time. For some reason, the girls just hadn't been calling in to play Guess What's in My Pants. Jimmy's gone. Look at that. Girl calls out of nowhere to play this game. Of course. Jimmy is uh, the cock blocker I of think, this. I think Jimmy's scaring the girls. Yeah. He is absolutely. When girls walk in here and they look at Jimmy, he looks like he could be a problem is what it is. Like if they no, start taking their clothes off, it's going to end in a rape. I really don't know why the listeners aren't listening today. Ah. So Jim's the next bird man at Alcatraz. Right. He's a little Shaves exactly. all his hair off. But he's a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> if you drink a lot, he's nice looking. So you guys are called listeners. <laughs> so your number one job is to listen. <laughs> to listen. You're not talkers. <laughs> you're not talkers. You're, you're supposed to listen we... first and then talk. Sorry. That's okay. All right. So why don't we play... Uh... We have the song? Yeah, we have the song. Uh, Bill, you don't know what this is all about? No, but I like the sound you of it. You can play along. It's going to be great. Song, sexy song. Voice, too. Let's start with the song. Mama. It's time to play. It's time to play. Hey, guess what's in my pants? Place my receiver. I call on your beaver. It's time to play. Hey, guess what's in my pants? It's time. My pants. My pants. Makes it all legitimate, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. When you have a song that starts the whole thing rolling. Of course Plus it, it sounds like it's from the golden age, like the 1950s. <laughs> doesn't it? Like you picked some engineer with a big set of headphones turning big dials to play that song. <laughs> People pointing. Yeah. You're on. You're on. Big on the air light blinking. <laughs> Applause. It's time to play Hey, Guess What's in My Pants. <laughs> We're here live. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, all the ships at sea. <laughs> Very good. Not right. Dildo, you are Frex. Uh, Jennifer, what do you look like, by the way? Uh, I am a dirty blonde. Mm, filthy. Uh, 34 double Ds. Uh-huh. Are they real? These? 34 yeah. double Ds. Yeah. Well, Texas is... Very uh, small frame. Yeah, big boobs, small frame. Texas is known for the, the breast. Yeah, we're, nice. we're known for that. Are you a, a, a petite gal height-wise? Actually, yeah. I'm 5'3". Yeah. 5'3". Five, three. Five, three. How much you weigh? Uh, 130. Do you have Ben Gay on your back? <laughs> <laughs> 130. <laughs> Fat ankles. <laughs> no? She's got a shape, uh, I would say, the way she talks. And how old are you? I'm 25. 25. 25. I picture her looking like the old, uh, remember Charlene Tilton? She was petite oh. height-wise, big set of cans, right? The yeah. girl from Swan hair. She was in uh, Dallas, I think. Man, it's our job to make these girls... I'm only 25 and I remember Dallas. ...sound hotter. No, I'm just trying to go uh, with the... Because the, back in the older days, yeah. Charlene Tilton wasn't that bad. Well, How about the girl from Swamp? She did, I know, but uh, that's what I'm saying. This girl's probably... You got a little thigh action? No, actually, I don't. Well, no? There's, there's something slightly wrong with you because 5'3", no, 130. No, Jane is in the, in the midsection. So. See, Charlene Tilton. You got a belly? No. Midsection is like, wouldn't that be the... Do you just go straight yeah, down? The belly and the, and the ass and the tits. Yeah. So you got your ass is a little big. No, I would go more lumpy. <laughs> no, actually, it's when when I gain in the boobs, oh, yeah. I gain boy. in the stomach. And, oh, oh boy. This but your game is falling apart. No, no, it's still perfect, Opie. Stop. Don't ruin no. it. We barely got the when you when you the wheels uh, are wobbling. <laughs> yeah, she needs something for her titties to rest no, on. No, I'm okay. It doesn't I'm look like. Hard. Hey, uh, Jennifer, it doesn't look like you were sitting in a gravel driveway, got up, brushed the gravel off, and your ass looks like that, does it? No. Okay, good. <laughs> You're not going to be featured no. in cellul cellulite horror stories. Those men no, no. that they got as you're trying to check out at the grocery credit. store. Uh, yeah. God, are those the, the best. The, the bikini bottoms just hanging off. They found oh. one lousy, oh. like, uh, butt... Uh, 
uh, what indentation, I yeah, guess. A little dimple. On uh, Jessica Simpson, and they had to circle it. Wow. And this is the cover of one of these magazines in the supermarket Poor yesterday. Girl. Going, look what's, really? look what's yes. going on with her look ass. Look what's starting. Dude, this tiny, I mean, this thing was barely noticeable, but she's, they made a big circle, an arrow. Guess whose butt this is? <laughs> she's throwing up in a mansion somewhere in <laughs> yeah, the United States yeah, right yeah. now. Just losing her mind. <laughs> right. You, uh, Jennifer, do you own a loofah? No. Oh, good. Jesus, uh, Anthony. That What's that? With. No, the, turn, turn the, the uh, receipt. pictures of. Don't uh, turn it off, though, then. <laughs> Do what? All right. Or Who fine. is that? That's is that Charlene Tilton? Doesn't look like her. Not in the yeah, face. That, that, that's her. That didn't look like her. That's definitely her. See the big meaty thigh? How old is that picture? Not She, she, she was kind of hot for five minutes. Jennifer? Back in uh, 75 or something. Jennifer? Yes. Have you uh, had a kid? No, no way. That's good. All right, that'll help. All right, I guess we're going to play Guess What's in My Pants with Jennifer from Texas. All right, let me explain the rules for those of I you that... I understand the rules. But... Well, our listeners, it's our other listeners... about you. Jennifer, you're yeah. a listener. It's not about me. You Go must ahead. listen. Silence. Silencio. Okay, here's the rules for those of you that don't know how to play. Uh, we will instruct Jennifer to take her phone. Do you like saying that name? Right? No. Yeah. I, I, I write a check out when I say that name. We will instruct sorry, Jennifer. Sorry, your ex-wife's name. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, to rub the phone on her most intimate of areas yeah. in various different ways uh, to try to guess what type of hairstyle she's sporting down there, just based on the sound oh. that comes from the phone. Uh, the the choices are the basic standard government issue triangle that all the women uh, start out with, the mohawk, which is you're, you know it's self-explanatory. They shave the sides off, so it's just a mohawk. The uh, Hitler mustache, which is uh, starts off like a mohawk, but then they just shave it down more from the belly button down to the uh, clit area, so it's a little. What they call Hitler mustache. Right. Looks like a little Hitler mustache down there. Which, by the hence way, looks completely the ridiculous. Yeah, hence the name yeah. Hitler mustache. We uh, we tried calling it the Charlie Chaplin, but it's not as funny as the Hitler mustache. That's right. And the Hitler mustache, by the way, looks completely ridiculous on girls when they uh, spread their legs apart. We had an ex exclamation point in the studio yesterday. Did you see that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was a little... It was really long. Yeah, yeah the long Hitler mustache it looks like that thing Stevie Ray Vaughan had underneath his body. Yeah, leg. just a little thing kind of hangs out there. When the girls spread their legs and you, they have that there, it looks silly. We could change like they it. missed. We could change it to the uh, the soul patch. Mm -hmm. That's what the that's called. The soul patch. The little soul <laughs> patch. It's yeah. just such a great reference. Hitler. Yeah. He barely gets any uh, mentions these days, so yeah, we call it the Hitler mustache. <laughs> and, of course... <laughs> with he, he really fell off, didn't he? <laughs> oh, yeah, he did. His popularity. Flash in the pan. <laughs> <laughs> then there's the um, what we call the wood floor which is completely clean-shaved, wood floor, or it's also been known uh, to be called on this program the Jean Benet Ramsey, we like to call it. The <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just because we can. We no. can now we'll call it the Bill Burr disgusted look on his face. I know, you know what I always say? Nobody always feels bad. He always says, uh, I'm sorry. You what know, can I tell just, you, Bill? I love it. It's better than what Jimmy called it. He called it Connor Peterson's armpit. <laughs> 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 uh, that's uh, why he has cockroaches. It's all uh, karma. Uh, Jennifer, yes. of course, as we are guessing, the worst thing you could possibly do is give us any clues or hints by saying no or yes or no something way. stupid like that. So you must remain silent until we ask you what indeed you do are you have naked? down your pants. I got my underwear down to my ankles. What Where are you? At my apartment. What kind of underwear? I guess they're regular... Not Thong, like old lady bag. underwear, but like briefs, I guess. Briefs? <laughs> well, I don't know. It's not like thong. I don't know what it's called. You wear big underwear down there in Texas? No. <laughs> this is like when you're trying to have phone sex with a girl, right? And you're already rolling your <laughs> eyes as your dick it's is starting to <laughs> slowly go down. What are you wearing? I don't know. Underwear. <laughs> just standard issue. Just underwear. Oh, know, got it at the Walmart the in an eight pack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, nothing sexy coming out of Walmart. Three for twenty dollars. <laughs> These the and wheels. Mom would buy the uh, five pack with the guy in the front. All right. Well, the wheels are falling off. So let's uh, let's start the game. All right, Jennifer. If you would take the phone now, rub it in an up and down fashion a few times. Okay. 
All right, listen. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, if we could have the side to side rub. Okay. Mm. Uh, could you do that a little slower, side to side, like five times? Okay. This is important. Mm. All right. Could you use it in a sentence? <laughs> <laughs> now in the uh, most important circular fashion. Okay. Barely hear it. Give it. Are you pushing hard enough? Push kind of hard on the phone and and rub uh, in a circle. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. Uh huh. Yeah, to uh-huh. the ladies, yeah. when we ask for a circular it. motion, you got to do it like you're making a crop circle. You got to right. really get in there and. <laughs> I was. <laughs> yeah. I I think I got it. I think I know. Okay. Uh, who wants to guess first? I'm gonna go with the landing strip. Whatever you're you going with, uh, the landing uh, strip, the mohawk. Yeah, there's something going the, on there. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the. Um, there's a five o'clock shadow thing happening there, though. You think? Yeah, that's the problem with this game. I'm mm. gonna go with uh, Hitler mustache. Hitler mustache. I am uh, agreeing with uh, Bill over there. I think I heard, especially in the circular, what sounded like there's a certain sound, almost like a uh, like you said, like a sh- five o'clock shadow. But then it was this little. Little wispy. thud, little thud thing that happened, a little wispy thud every time she went around. And I also heard it at the top and the bottom of her rotation, which means it's not a Hitler mustache. You'd only hear it on one side of the rotation. Mm, wow. Look so at I, you. I, I, I think, good ears, huh? I think what I'm hearing is a mohawk. Um, anyone else? Van, you'd like to uh, join in since you're sitting there? Uh, I'm sorry with your impeccable reasoning. I have to stick with the landing strip. Landing strip yeah. also? Which would be the Mohawk. The okay. Mohawk. Okay. Uh, Jennifer, if you would, at this time, please tell us what you have in your pants. You all suck. I have a finely groomed regular triangle. Oh. Damn it. You know what? That was going to be my a first triangle. Answer. It's just a regular groomed triangle. That's what I, I heard. The five o'clock shadow. Stuff. Wow. It. Damn it. We all <laughs> sucked out on that one. Yeah. I must Y'all have been you were wrong. You shouldn't have been wrong if you if you were going with, with, with what I was saying. Oh, no. It was, believe me, it wasn't based on what you said. It was based on my <laughs> own uh, reasoning, which sucked. I must have just heard the, uh, boy, what were you doing? Rotating it up to your thighs and back? I no. heard I heard something. I heard that, too, but I thought it was just like a 5 o'clock shadow thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I did. Just what you thought, too. We don't get many triangles, so that's good to throw that in there as a Very little uh, goof. You but tricked it's us. not the... Earth Mama Muff. It's just the regular, finely groomed triangle. We understand, Jennifer. Jennifer right. from Texas, thanks for playing Guess What's in My Pants. <laughs> <Love it. laughs> it's time to play. It's time to play. It's time to play. Guess what's in my pants. Place a receiver upon your beaver. It's time to play. Guess what's in my pants. My pants. You're checking out the Opie and Anthony program. And they wonder why no one goes anymore. Bill Burr in studio. His HBO comedy special is on tomorrow night. Make sure you check out. At midnight? That's right. Make sure you check out Bill Burr on HBO. I got HBO on demand, so I can watch it like a million times after it airs. I'm very, very happy about it. I'm going to hold you to that. I love the on demand thing. Can't get enough of it. That's the uh, That's the future. The future. I want him to get to that point where uh, any movie you want to see is available on demand through your cable provider or something. Where you could just, you know, you pop it in and it's there. Yeah, what are we waiting for? That's going to be soon and you, that's why you just stop buying DVDs. Yeah. That's going to be like your cassette tapes that I still right. have. All the uh, VCR tapes. Oh, oh just piling up. And, and uh, audio cassettes. <laughs> just useless, oh, yeah. Useless magnetic tape. It's funny you say that because... Uh, I've been unpacking a, a bunch of CDs lately, uh-huh. and I'm going, this is a waste. Why do I have CDs? Oh, oh you yeah. don't need those anymore. Why would you have no. CDs anymore? I, I've noticed that at college. With the iPods yep. and the MP3s. And yeah. When I go to sell my CD afterwards, they go, is that a DVD? And you're like, no, it's a CD. Like, literally, like, three months ago, all of a sudden, it's like, CD. I have an 8-track. 
Yeah. What is I have this? A, I have a record. <laughs> a record. I have some hot wax here for yeah. you, kids. <laughs> a lot of our stuff is now available on audible.com. So mm-hmm. the kids just go there, download the show. Yeah. We're going to have, like, uh, you know, best of... Uh... It's perfect. So even, like, when the iPod is, is over, the next yeah. thing comes, you just fucking throw that out. Yeah, it's just not throw it away. Whole... We're, we're getting to the point where you really shit. everything will be available digitally, and you won't need the hard copies of this way to transfer it from what it is, you know, music or DVD, to the viewing source, right. your television or, or what, stereo or whatever the hell you're doing. It, it's just delivered digitally, and that's it, right from the provider to what you have to watch it on. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's getting close to that. I was reading a popular mechanics the other day. Oh, Opie. That's God. where I get a lot of my uh, information oh, my from. And I like, uh, I like when they look back, they take a look back, 20, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago, and show what Popular Mechanics was featuring. And they showed um, uh, 30 years ago or something, they had a, a cable. They showed cable television. And they had this smiling family around their old colored television set with one of those boxes that were connected with the cable, with the wire that, you, <laughs> yeah. that you, your friends, drunk friends used to trip over and they would fling off your coffee table <laughs> like, a, like a weapon across the room. And um, there were 33 channels on that box, and they were crowing about it, and then popular mechanics predicted that in the future, we could have, could have, up to 100 channels available. Amazing, isn't it? We're what they there. were thinking back then? God, you That's read, right. He reads Popular Mechanic magazine, and I'm reading Us Weekly. It is the best the for the bowl. I, I read People magazine yeah, on the People plane. People magazine, you know. Popular popular it's like mechanics. watching TV. You don't even have to think. You finish the crossword, you feel like a fucking genius. <laughs> you know what it is? It's it, it starred with Alan Alda in MASH, pictured in the corner. Like, <laughs> like it, it, that isn't easy enough. I still can never finish the fucking thing because there's always some sort of like uh, co-starred with Bob Denver on Far Out Space Nuts. You're like, fuck! <laughs> That's the only one I yeah, need! Yeah, can't get that one. Right. God damn it. That's so funny. <laughs> So oh, that true. Is really bad. Oh, dude, you know, speaking of like all the record things, when did that all of a sudden like I know I had to you know buy uh, a fancy shirt here yes. to go do my TV thing? Every fucking clothing store you go into now they have a DJ in there and he's spinning stuff like you're spinning at the clothing yeah. store. Yeah, going there yeah. eleven in the morning and they're playing these raunchy stuff. The f words just flying. Real? What store are you going to? I was on uh, I was on Melrose oh. Avenue. They uh, were playing. Yeah. They actually he had like the uh, the Outcast. Uh, CD, the Andre 3000 one. There yeah. Was some girl talking about whether she was a whore or not. <laughs> you know? I don't know what it was. But, it could have been any record. But I wanted some dick. <laughs> like saying like shit like that and you're walking in there like that's what you Yeah, I'm, I'm going to buy a shirt. <laughs> right. Maybe I'll get the pants too, man. This this is infectious. I swear to you, I, I'm really going to sound like an old person here, but it's like the whole thing now. It's just this whole big hype of fucking nothing. Like, I watched, like, the VMAs, and it's like, if half those whores could sing, they could put some fucking clothes on. <laughs> they have, like, they're, like, running through showers. They lower them from the ceiling. There's, like, you know, synchronized midgets dancing. Yeah. It's like, you're not fooling me. You can't fucking sing. Right. Kelly Clarkson Hype sounded like nothing. a drunk whore at, at uh, karaoke. <laughs> Just screeching this fucking song with her ass crack hanging out. It's true. Yep. They hype it's, nothing. It's so true. And uh, we could say into the Britney Spears thing. She just took herself out of the game. She officially had her stupid She's kid. done. She's oh, it's re- over. Announce her retirement. It's Announce done. Announce her retirement, yeah. You're known as a sex sing- uh, symbol, so what do you do? You go and wreck your body. Not only yeah. did she get pregnant, and from what I heard uh, in uh, things like People magazine, uh, she tacked on a lot of pounds, extra pounds that uh, even other pregnant women don't uh, put on this much weight. And... She got a C-section. <laughs> It'd be bad enough if she delivered it the normal way and blew out her pussy. Right. Blew, blew out. But at least you could... You, blew out her <laughs> but you could at least, like... You'd forget after a while she got in shape, but now right. it's just like... New name for a whack bag. Yeah. Blew out her pussy. Blown out pussy. Blown out pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Blew it out. But the, the C-section... <laughs> A.K.A. Mothers of America. Yep. C-section, yes, Anthony. She gets the C-section, which now, you know, I know there are a lot of ladies out there that have gotten the C-section. It is uh, a, a, one of the sacrifices you have made in your life to have a child, uh, but there is no way you're going to convince convince anybody that it is sexy, <laughs> oh. that it, uh, it, it it looks good. But they do it right along the bikini line, eh? That's no, what they tell no, the they ladies. don't. 
They, no. they always got to yank them up no. like an old man. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're, you're not, you got to have the one piece. <laughs> she has to wear the one piece now because, you know, the paparazzi, they're just waiting for it to stretch and that scar to come up. Right. So they Imagine. can circle it. Exactly. How hot is it when a, a girl wears uh, those little uh, boy short bikini bottoms? And they're pulled down to where you're just starting to see where the hair would be. Well, the latest fad is uh, sweat. when they grow up. <laughs> the latest fad is sweatpants <laughs> rolled down. Right, roll that's down another one. A few times. Right down to the pubic oh, mound. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right down to it. The and they're not doing it for yeah. us either. I love when they say that shit. I yeah. don't dress like that. I just I yeah. do it for myself. Makes yeah. me feel I good. I feel good. So what? Brittany's gonna go back on stage in a one piece My now. Tits mushed together, <laughs> and we're we're all gonna go to the concerts to l- listen to her talent now. To listen to oh, her lip sync. Stop. Because that's what she does live. She lip syncs. Wanna... And the only reason people were going was because she got in a bathtub. I saw it. She had some Showtime thing or whatever it was. I watched the entire thing. Oh my God! She gets in a bathtub. She's wearing this skin tight uh, bikini thing, and and the bikini is the color of her skin. So it looks like she's naked. They should have just sharpied in some pubes on that thing and some nipples because it looked like she was nude. And she's in this bathtub. And then she has fake sex with a big black guy on a bed that comes flying out from the ceiling. Nothing to do with her singing. Nothing. I was watching it with the sound turned down. You didn't even need to hear this uh, this crap. With my cack in my hand. My cock in my fucking hand is broad. He's fucking a black guy. Oh! <laughs> she, she's doing what amounts to a live sex show. I want to uh, congratulate Christina Aguilera. She officially wins. You win. Yes, she you wins. You win. She won what we call the uh, the uh, Tiffany... Uh, oh, shit! I wish I could oh, remember her oh, fucking name. Uh, Tiffany... Debbie Gibson. Debbie Gibson. Open. Yes. <laughs> remember that one? Remember that battle? They were like, who's going to last longer, Tiffany or Debbie Gibson? That was a much more evenly matched. Was it? You think? Yeah. They were both slobs. Well, Debbie Gibson, I think, uh, went a, l- a far, a, a little further than Tiffany did. She went to Broadway. Oh, I thought you meant uh, Playboy, but they no, both they that, both right? wound up taking their clothes off no. long after anyone wanted to see them. Oh, man, Brittany, <laughs> Brittany's people must have been. They always do that. Brittany's people must have been just thinking, "What the fuck are you doing? No. Top of your career, you're fucking up your body." Soon to be out of work, people. You're gonna have no job. Yeah. I like when women always like complain about that. Oh, there's so there are so many like uh, they exploit us for our bodies and that. And the second any one of them make it, they do the fucking horse spread. Yeah. And e- e- the very least, Rolling Stone. I remember Jennifer Aniston like uh, two fingers over a nipple, yeah. ass crack hanging out. That's it. Ass. She was laying down on her stomach. I remember that shot. Yeah. It was her very tasteful. It was very yeah. tasty. Ass shot showing. Spooge just done. falling on those pages all across the country. <laughs> I like the ones that, uh, you know, during their uh, uh, early 20s, uh, they're popular. They do nothing. They just show no skin whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And they fall off the map. They become has-beens. Uh, maybe they get picked up on some reality show. They're now in their 40s and decide, Ugh. just as a freeing experience, I decided to do Playboy. Farrah Fawcett. Yeah, there's a oh, perfect yeah. example. 50, what, two, and she finally no decides. One. Oh, and then, like, Oprah will come on and actually say that it's hot. I think it's hot. Yeah. yeah. This is Fifty's great. Hot. Hey, you look hot. better now than you ever <laughs> have, girlfriend. That's right. Uh, Sarah, no, you don't. Thanks for throwing us a bone. Yeah. Jesus. 52 or something like that, she finally decided. Well, I'll tell you, if you're going to bang a 52-year-old. Yeah, you want to go with the Farrah? Oh, yeah. What you about Elle McPherson in the paper today? 42 years oh, my, old. Yeah, 42. Holy they crap. showed her on the beach. Looks uh, amazing. 42. Amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. That's you genetically. Tell you, man, if you got the personal chef, that's the yeah. thing. That's what it is, the personal yeah. chef. Yeah, they just they just stick in front of you as you're hungry. You just eat it, and then you're not hungry. Then you, you know, I have McDonald's the, voice goes away. I got away. the personal chef. Do you really? I, yeah. Comes, comes, comes to my house. Anthony's a fancy person. <laughs> comes to my house and cooks for the week. And uh, uh, and everything puts is... little Tupperwares. Everything is in little Tupperwares, all labeled. All labeled what it is. I just got to go. I... To throw it in the oven. I don't microwave it, mind you. It's Stanley kind of a Kubrick funny taste. <laughs> scene. That's An all exactly. white room. <laughs> <laughs> Just slides out of the wall. From a, some long, fucking <laughs> a long push in shot to the oven. <laughs> yeah, through this long cavernous <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some classical music playing in the background of some whore fingers herself by a cupboard. <laughs> As I'm opening my pristine Tupperware. 
latex gloves on. <laughs> oh, is that perfect? You've completely gotten me down. That's it. <laughs> hey, moving backwards a little bit. Back to technology. Yes. Well, this is what kind of started us on the whole thing. I got uh, the September 16th issue of Entertainment Weekly. Just Ooh, trying to keep that's up. That's a hot on, issue. Trying to keep yeah. up on pop culture. You know how it is, right? And I'm, you don't have it wrapped in plastic. And I'm leafing through this thing like this, you know, checking out the pages. No big deal. Moving along, right? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's uh, I'm, you know, by myself. It's kind of nighttime, so it's starting to get a little creepy. A little creepy at night? Everything gets a little creepier as the sun goes down. And I'm sitting there reading the magazine, and I turn the page and listen what happened. Yeah, exactly. Listen what happened. My name is Earl. Do good things and good things happen to you. Do bad things and it will come back to haunt you. I'm talking about karma. My name is Earl. Dudes, I jumped. I'm like, what the fuck? Why is the magazine talking to me? <laughs> I could shake you Have up Have you guys in a quiet seen this room. yet? Has anyone else seen these things yet? Because no. <laughs> you know this is a new trend. This isn't one of those things like, hey, let's try this. It's working, yeah. and, and now your magazines are going to be talking oh, to you. Oh, it's perfect. You don't have to read. They just turn it and send a mush. Imagine you just uh, have uh, it set up where you turn the page, and it just will read to you now. The right. entire page will be read to you. Nothing written on it. I, <laughs> just I'm going to tell you right now, violence in airports is going to increase. It's already bad enough you have douchebags talking too loud on their cell phones. On their fucking cell phones. Ugh. But I turned the page. Obviously, it's a, an ad for this new show, Earl. Yeah. But uh, as you turn the page, it, it trips a switch or whatever. It's a good idea for the show. And, uh, yeah. My name is Earl. Do good things and good things happen to you. Do bad things and it will come back to haunt you. I'm talking about karma. My name is Earl. I'm amazed. Just by turning the page. And I'll tell you, that's all I need to know. I'm watching that show. That's it. Now I'm tuning in. They have but they should have out. a warning on the front page of the, the you know the, the front cover of the magazine that uh, the the thing's going to talk to in you. In a quiet room when yeah, you're not expecting any noise, that'll scare you. All of a sudden, something starts talking. Ah, oh, the Jennifer Aniston picture with her ass. Very no wow. Yeah, remember that one? The cover of Rolling Stone, right on the cover. She got see. her uh, her ass just a little the uh, the uh, wow. out of focus a little bit. That's that is a very hot picture, by the way. That is really hot. You spank that hiney. <laughs> I don't think she's hotter than. That's going Angelique. back a couple of years. I wouldn't hook up with anybody who fucked Billy Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I called Pamela Anderson too. I remember that. So I said I wouldn't fuck anybody who fucked Tommy Lee. And what did she get? Hepatitis. The hep. The hep. Yep. She's got something going on though, because she just hangs out with all her old boyfriends. All of them. Recently, she, re recently she was with Tommy Lee, and there were rumors that she was going to marry him again in Vegas. Kid Rock. And then uh, there was a picture of uh, her with uh, Kid Rock very recently. Mm -hmm. And then she married her dogs in Malibu with uh, her old boyfriend that was the surfer. All within like a week. Yeah. She just jumps around from boyfriend, ex-boyfriend to ex-boyfriend. Yeah. And they're all fine with it for some reason. Mm -hmm. Probably all have the hep. She must be a great lay. But there it is. They put commercials in magazines. You had your advertising, which you could, you, you know, you just thumb through. Now there's just audio commercials in magazines. My name, my name, my name. Yeah. My name, my name is Earl. I bet Drew Boogie could play that, <laughs> make it sound good. Wait, you got one in Rolling Stone too? No way. Holy, bit slightly different. That Jack Osborne. Die, don't spend. It goes. Holy shit. That lights up, too, huh? Yeah, yeah the headlights There's lights light on now, it. That would have scared the shit the out of you. The headlights on the car light up. That is so weird. Like, Thank God you got the comedy. If you exactly. got the scary <laughs> one. Am I late to the party? When did this start? Did this just start like this, this week or this new. month? It must oh, yeah. have. Cause Years ago, that would have taken uh, an entire room of equipment to uh, <laughs> get a sound like that. Now it's in a magazine. So there's one in the latest uh, Rolling Stone magazine. Those little chips were the size of a freight car. Let's say hi to Sammy and Queen. Sammy! <laughs> hey, Opie, Aunt Bill, how you doing? Hey, man. Listen, that same shit happened to me, Entertainment Weekly. Yeah. Then I opened last night. I'm watching the Yankees. I get my new Rolling Stone. That supernatural shit with the headlights looking at me. Yeah, Ben just played that for us. That, that was uh, pretty creepy. Yeah, but you know, but this started about a couple of years ago with the Sopranos. Really? 
I had opened a magazine, Rolling Stone or something, and then all of a sudden the theme song came on, loud. And huh. just scares the hell out of you. Well, now that they got the technology, obviously someone figured Cheaper. it out. Where it's just a, uh, a slightly thicker page of paper. That's all it is. Right, it, right. Yeah, it's like is... maybe the size of five pieces of uh, you know paper. I hate to use this word, but where is the mechanism? Yeah, where is the mechanism? <laughs> you know what it is? It's a little battery, I think, inside that thick paper. Open it up. Oh, my oh, God. There it is. It's, it's a, a cyborg! <laughs> 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 Look at it. It's got. That is a little archaic. I thought it was smaller than that. Yeah. There's a printed circuit board. There's two wire leads leading leading to a uh, a, a speaker. A little speaker. And then there's um. He just contaminated the room. What are those batteries on there? Three batteries. Yeah, but Opie. A mechanical switch. Yeah. In the same magazine, Jesus. there was a DVD for the new Chris Rock show at the beginning, right? Yeah, I saw that, too. So I thought the Earl thing was also a DVD. Okay. And that's what scared the fuck out of me. Yeah, that is so weird. That's just sick. Yeah, it's just sick. It's a little big. It's it's still a little big, but... It's a little big. they got to get that technology a little better. <laughs> oh, they will. Yeah, this is like the inside of a transistor radio. Yeah, if you're putting out a magazine and you need a soldering iron... <laughs> It's a little big. <laughs> but you know how this goes. That's the start of it, and they'll figure out how to make that smaller immediately. But still, what, you know, the point I'm making, it's not that thick, uh, that section of the magazine that pulls that off for, no. uh, for the new show, uh, Earl, or whatever it is. No, they're going for a new level of, like, irritating things. Yeah. Like, on, like I was telling you guys earlier, that it's like the third time someone approached me, they're like, y you, you want to have, like, uh, part of your act be like a cell phone uh, uh, ring? You know, ring tone, comedians yeah. be like cell phone rings. Yeah. There's no quicker way to become like overexposed and fucking irritating. Burn out your shit. And yeah, just... what it... you might be a redneck here. Oh, you might be a redneck. Hold here. on, my phone's ringing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ring tones, and they're not gonna stop. There's, they're not gonna have a law or something. The magazine's gonna be filled with these things. You're gonna have at least ten in each magazine. Every time you turn the page, one's still gonna be yapping. The next page is gonna start talking over uh, it. Yeah, because now it's not like, like a big loud conversation going on. It's obviously a great idea. It's a brand new idea. We're talking about it. You got to think all these uh, ad agencies are are jumping on the bandwagon. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to get. Well, does it make you want to watch the show? No, it made me want to throw the magazine at the TV. All right. we're, we're, we're doing a little. We're doing a little marketing research here. Huh? Yes. Well, you know what? Uh, it, it, they're just squeezing in advertising everywhere for everything. Like we were saying about the movie theater. Used to go to the movies and you'd see the previews and then the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's loaded with the same commercials that you see at home on television. And uh, it started out they would just play one a few years back. Now you sit there and have to sit through a shitload of regular, you know, Coca-Cola commercial. There it is. And uh, people aren't going to the movies as much. Well, I don't even when it says start time four ten or whatever. Yeah, I don't show up till at least four ten, four fifteen, and then buy my ticket. Yeah, you don't have to. But, but then the, you get a shitty seat. Ah. Well, but uh, some of these theaters are starting to <laughs> they're starting to print the time that actual movie starts, <laughs> so you can blow off all the uh, the nonsense in the beginning. I thought they just blow off all the nonsense. Well, then they're not going to blow off the nonsense. I'll tell you what's going to be the next step. Oh, why? Because they need the money because the $10 for a ticket isn't enough? I'll tell you what the next step is, Anthony. Higher. There will be a commercial in the middle of a movie. Oh, I just, no. guarantee it. No way. Yes, Gar no that, way. That, that's crazy talk. Now I, you're talking insane. <laughs> what guarantee do you guarantee it? Uh, could no, you no imagine way. that? You're watching a movie, all of a sudden it just fades out and a commercial starts. <laughs> I'd lose my fucking mind. How soon would they go interview like Woody Allen? He, this is my second Woody Allen fucking yes, reference. Yes, it day. is. He like he's like you know he's always like bitching when they colorize film. Yeah, forget about it, man. He'd be fucking all over there. Just yeah, cutting. A, it fades out at a dramatic moment, and a commercial pops in in the theater. Uh, you, there'd be a riot. Let's say hi to Sue in Jersey. Sue, what's up? Hey guys, how you doing? Pretty good, Sue. Hi. Listen, Opie, I'm surprised you didn't see this thing last week. It was in Us uh, Weekly. Us Weekly had one, too? Yeah, the WB one with the scary car. I swear, I just got turned on to this only a couple days ago. I had no idea. And this is going to be in, this thing is going to be in every magazine, and they're going to have a bunch of them. Oh, it's totally obnoxious. But you know where it came from? And do you remember greeting cards used to sing Happy Birthday to you? Oh, yeah. Of course. Remember those, but you know, you took a greeting card. That flopped. You could choose well, it. Here it is. Well, the weird thing is, I wasn't uh, prepared for that, so it, it kind of <laughs> it kind of made me jump a little bit. Like, what the oh, fuck is this? Up. 
I was driving my car. I just picked up the mail and opened the thing, and it ju- it started playing. Oh, really? And I almost had an accident. It was um, it's it's actually a great idea. It it's really is a good idea. There's not a lot of great ideas out there these days, but that one uh, that one's a huge one. All anyway, right. Anyway, thank you. You guys so- suck. All right. You know what else is really bad? Yeah. When, when you buy a DVD, you buy it. It's yours to possess. And uh, they put previews to other movies on the DVD, and you try to hit the menu button and just you can, to skip right? it, and it gives you that round circle slash. Yeah. Like, you're not allowed. No. You're watching this. And I hear they try to guess, like, well, if you were going to watch this movie, maybe oh, you're into this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. If he bought this thing, of course he's going to like these previews. I've had that in some porn, and it's just like, <laughs> wow, this is the fucking road I'm going down? Is, is, is this the next step? That is really yeah. funny. Yeah. If you're watching I'm this, let me... some girl in the mouth is yeah. oh, oh, oh. I'm like, if you're watching this, let me show you yeah. your future. You're yeah. gonna like ass this masters. This next clip 10. won't be horrifying six <laughs> weeks from now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> God, I wish that was just a joke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Well, so that's going on today, and they're taking over the magazines. Fox News. Uh, yeah, we should do this. Hurricane Ophelia has hit land, I guess, or kind of hit land. <laughs> wow, who's the fatty on TV? Is this that uh, fat show? I know I look good. I look good. Mm. So tickets available for this tickets batch, still right? available, and they're fifty dollars oh, at the door. Stop. Come on down. See wow, you. that is a fullback. Is that M- the Monique show? No, it's just the news still. Wow, look at the cottage cheese on that thigh. Well, I guess it's Fashion Week here in New York City, and of course, I'm sure they're doing a big girl. Look at her doing the, uh, the I'm going to win a beauty pageant wave. Oh, well, let me hear her. She's got to say something stupid. Well, I don't know. If... Draw the line, Jody. Okay. Soretta Barrington from Harlem, New York. She's an aspiring actress, and she just graduated from inspiring Manhattan College. Actress. Marymount Manhattan College. And we welcome everybody here. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Full figure women are really the... making a landmark in the industry. You're seeing yeah, a lot every more time they walk, they mark the land. So called real <laughs> women. Uh... These are fuller figured women. Yes. Yes. Full figured I'm beauty. I'm sick of these fucking people who want to be in entertainment. They don't want to work out. Go to the gym like the rest of us, you assholes. You can't do this. This, yeah, you can't be this fat. You're not going to be a lead. They're brilliant, though, because they're a bunch of fatties, but they made them sound like they're hot by calling them full-figured women. She's a caterer, can cook. Right. Life expectancy of 38 years. Isn't this a variety of lovely, full-figured <laughs> women? Yeah. If you have grandmother arms in your 20s, <laughs> you should not be on television. <laughs> only fat, only chubby chasers, only fatty chasers are attracted to these women. They make it sound like they're walking down the street, and if they're dressed nicely, and they look like any guy is going to look and go, mm-hmm, that's hot. No. Only guys that enjoy freakishly fat women are going to be attracted to, yeah. to these women. That's it. Only guys want to fuck your obliques. <laughs> <laughs> Tight. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's what's into that. Uh, let's get into Hurricane Ophelia. It's, oh. it's uh, wreaking something uh, off the coast of North Carolina this <laughs> wreaking morning. Wreaking something. Maybe. Well, after Hurricane Katrina, I who mean, really stop? Cares, yeah, right. Katrina redefined havoc. But Hurricane yeah. Katrina got everyone's attention, so of course these news channels, any hurricane now is going to get a lot of exposure. Yeah, they send their uh, reporters, and they've been standing in the wind. Uh, I think that they're one of the main reasons why we weren't prepared for uh, Katrina. The weather the reporters. Yeah, the last five years, like weather became like rating. So anytime mm-hmm. it's going to be like six inches of snow, yeah, they make it seem like the, the apocalypse. And yeah, then, trying and to then, prepare yeah, the people. Yeah, then just dries up. The, Some people are like, yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, mean, how many yeah, times yeah. they said the, the eye of the storm is coming right at us now? And then, oh, it made a last minute turn. It's always a last minute thing. It makes that this happens. last minute turn. It is barreling directly toward this city. Right at the last minute. I don't know what happened there, but it made a little turn, and thank goodness for that, because these people are... This one was a tricky one. We all got fooled on this. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing they do. We all... I was watching the radar the whole time, and last minute, what are you? You got like six weeks with a beef jerky in your freezer. (laughs) Now what am I going to do? Uh, They send their reporters down there to stand in the wind and make it sound uh, horrific, but after uh, Katrina, eh. Yeah, we got some of that audio. Listen to this lady in the middle of the wind. 
Patty, and thank you. Watching these live pictures now off the coast of Riceville Beach in North Carolina, the conditions there are deteriorating today. I love saying that. Uh, and especially so over the past three hours, Jamie Colby is on the scene there for us. She filed this report a few moments ago about conditions that she is hearing and seeing and feeling there in Wrightsville. I'm honestly not sure how much longer we're going to be able to come down here. Yeah, sure. <sighs> She's not sure how long she can last there. Okay, right. She sounds bad. It sounded know. really dramatic. I, I can't in trouble. You, can't believe you cut it off. I know. All right, hold on. It's riveting. I'll go back slightly. She here. Sounds in trouble. <laughs> she sounds in trouble. For how much longer we're going to be able to come down here, this close to the shore, as Hurricane Ophelia makes her way to the Carolina coast, and it is stretching along the entire coast of North and South Carolina. Everybody being warned to stay inside and stay off the roads. We've already had ten inches of rain. We may get a foot or more. Just today, as Ophelia makes her way, she's expected to cause effects here of heavy rain and flooding for some 24 hours. Forgive the glasses, guys, but i got to tell you, it's bad enough to eat sand. It really hurts when it hits your eyes, and it's also... <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, is she informing yeah, everybody. I realize that. <laughs> Forgive the glasses, guys. I was going to go downstairs, try to find some sand, and throw it into my eyeballs, but after hearing that report... I yeah. didn't think about that. Thank for God. A while. I thought it only hurt when it hit your skin. <laughs> right. But your, but your eyes balls. were immune to that. <laughs> so I've had shit bounce off my eyes my whole life. And yeah. yeah. I guess when it's really small like that, granular, could hurt more. That's when it gets in there. Yeah. Guys, but I gotta tell you, it's bad enough to eat then. It really hurts when it hits your eyes. And it's also hitting me and blowing me all over the place. As the winds picked up, we have felt 70 mile per hour winds. We're expecting to get as much as 80 in the next hour. As the eye of Hurricane Ophelia makes her way, no telling exactly where it'll make landfall, but here in Wrightsville Beach, we're definitely going to feel the strongest impact, the strongest that we've certainly it's felt today. Breath. And throughout the day, these heavy winds, heavy rains, we've had even hail. As the winds continue to pick up, there's been flying debris, some bridge closings, and lots of uh, electricity out, including in our hotel. That temporarily restored is a good thing because getting stuck in the elevator once a day is more than enough. You had a blackout for a couple of minutes. Here. Back to you guys. I think she's going to get an award. Yeah. yeah. I'm, getting a, I'm getting a story. Wow. This is me. I'm wow. getting this award. The power went out in our hotel temporarily. Good thing. Yeah, wow, she got caught in an elevator. That's yeah. just like being caught in an attic. Wow, that's body. Wondering and... if the water's ever going to, you know, stop rising. Right. Same that's... thing. Bodies floating down the street and looting and yeah, sure, same thing. And you hear all the exaggerating. It's like uh, six inches could get up to another foot. Right, that's a big gray area. Just today, <laughs> it, really it could, it could probably won't, but it could. Buildings could, could tip over. Uh, Chuck from Ohio makes a good point. Chuck. Hey, how you doing, guys? Hey. Chuck from Ohio here. Yep. Um, they name these hurricanes uh, in alphabetical order, don't they? Oh yeah. Uh, the last one was Katrina. Uh, now we're on Ophelia. What the hell happened to L, M, and N? Yeah, what happened to L, M, and N? Did they, did they not rate up there? Or? They didn't rate. They just Well, rated. how about that? They were just hurricanes in the middle Run of the ocean out. that did nothing. Right. There was Hurricane Nate was N, right? Yeah. Nate. I thought they were all I called it Hurricane things. Than, though. That's what I called it. <laughs> what was the other one? What was L? I don't even know. Uh, we could go to the official Hurricane nah, website. Not that important. Mike in New York, what's up? Mike A. Hey. What's hey. up? Kobe. Hey. It, it, it's amazing. They can't make a hurricane sound bad enough to scare people these days because every marginal storm merits this kind of news coverage, you know? Exactly. To scare people out of New Orleans for Katrina, they'd have to have been like, you know, holy shit! <laughs> 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 I mean, what are they going to have to do these days to get people to evacuate their homes? <laughs> Who was saying this? Uh, was it Bill? Like before the show about Ophelia is kind of like the opening band or the be oh yeah yeah it's like the opening band going on after the Stones or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, after the headliner. The headline's already gone up and killed. That was Katrina. Yeah. Now you know what? We got one more storm for you. Come on, you guys. <laughs> right. Come on, stick around. We got to <laughs> keep it going. <laughs> stick around. This next yeah. storm comes through. Us. Yeah. It's you're trying to sell, yeah. You're trying to sell another band on the stage after the Rolling Stones. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys, give her a chance. <laughs> 
Come on, give Great White a chance. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, boys. All right, very nice. Uh, Seth, what's up? Hey, guys. Love you guys. Oh, you're awesome. Hey, you guys are uh, mistaken. Uh, it's not Hurricane Katrina. It's Hurricane Karina. Yeah, <laughs> did you hear the president's wife? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Fantastic. Oh, my God. Show? That's where I go for all my news. Well, uh, Bill was too busy being a huge star in L.A. He missed the show uh, yesterday, so we're going to have to play that clip for him. We have, uh, yeah, Laura Bush uh, mispronouncing Hurricane Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to find that clip. Uh, before that, we have another very short clip on Hurricane Ophelia. How do you fuck that up? <laughs> I don't know. Just... I can say not knowing, like, uh, the latest, you know, hit band or whatever. Yeah. In your 50s, but I mean, That's... that was on the news Every minute of the day for days and days and days. That stuff used to just piss me off when I would see it happen, and now I just laugh. The worst hurricane laugh. to hit the country. It's na It was all over the place, and she couldn't figure it you out. It's funny. I saw a picture of uh, you know Bush getting debriefed and all that. You know, Kanye was like, George Bush doesn't uh, care about black people. Yeah. I saw uh, the vice president, uh, Dick Cheney. He doesn't look like he gives a shit about anything. Any people. Yeah, he's just sitting there like, oh, God, you know. He's yeah. like the grumpy old bastard just once out of office. Just leave me alone. No, I think he ha he's he's the evil genius. You think he enjoys uh, yeah. his job? Yeah. Oh, uh, he just, uh, that guy is frightening. He just looks miserable I, all the time. He's doing someone a favor by sitting in that seat. He's getting yeah. something for that in the end. Uh, well, here's uh, the president's wife. Listen to this, Bill. Because of Hurricane Karina, are starting to school this week. And I also want to encourage anybody who is affected by Hurricane Karina to make sure their children... That would be nobody. Twice. Nobody was affected by Hurricane Karina. Karina. She said it twice. Maybe it's a... This is bad. <laughs> One of the victims' names. That sounds like a black girl's name. Karina. Uh, sorry. All right. Hurricane Karina. And then we got uh, Drew from North Carolina sent this in about Hurricane Ophelia. I guess the local news down there. Hurricane Ophelia arrives in North Carolina acting more like a slowy cane because she's going to be around a while. <laughs> <laughs> a slowy cane? He did not say a slowy cane. <laughs> What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> he even knew that joke sucked. If you listen oh. to him, he's trying to blow through it. Like, I don't think this is funny. Just say it. It's going to work. <laughs> he's just trying to run to oh, the next thing. Slowy cane. <laughs> All right, knock it off. <laughs> uh, they should have had a guy with that trumpet right out there in the rain oh, just yeah. blowing that in his ear. I got to hear that again. <laughs> Hurricane Ophelia arrives in North Carolina acting more like a slowy cane because she's going to be around a while. <laughs> hey, now! Hey, get this, people. Slowy cane! <laughs> Ooh. You need that banjo strumming? Yeah. Da, 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 la, 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 la. <laughs> it's a, it doesn't even make sense as far as the plan works. Well, no, no I, it just Hurry. hit me. Huh. Hurry, cane. Hurry. 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 Oh, to slowy. Yeah. All right, all right. Hurry. I just got it when he said it. For some reason, Hurry it clicked. Kick. When so. I heard it earlier, I was like, that doesn't even make sense. So. You know what would be better if it really didn't just completely made no sense that you just fucking scream it? It was just <laughs> such energy that people buy it. <laughs> Hurry, game more like a meatloaf game! <laughs> He's got this fucking wacky vibe. And people, like, people say, oh, yeah. these kids today, they're crazy. I don't even know what they're talking about. You're a meatloaf game. That's <laughs> great. I don't know what he meant. All right, well, it's a slowy game. <laughs> That guy sounded like he was having more fun than I've had in weeks. <laughs> he was the energy he put into that. He was waiting hours to say that. Sport coat just blowing oh, in the wind. Look, it's a guy. I got a great line. It's his, it's his big Slowly day. Came. It's his big day. Oh. <laughs> Hurricane Ophelia arrives in North Carolina, acting more like a slowy cane because she's going to be around a while. Do you think he went more like uh, and kind of looked at the camera? I think he, Slowly, I, I think he leaned forward. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, Put on your funny hats, people, because here it comes. Here comes the funny. Oh, uh, that's like you ever see Andy Kindler do that, like mocking bad comedy. He like leans forward when he does <laughs> yeah. the punchline. Yeah. Uh, Slowy cane. Slowy canes. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, what is the fucking benchmark for comedy <laughs> in the weather room? I don't know. 
Oh, uh, we found the Celine Dion clip for Bill Burr. This is one of the funniest things we've heard in a while. Yeah, if you missed this the other day, it's uh, Celine losing her mind on Larry King. Uh, here's another person. You know, uh, she don't speak you too good English. Uh, she she's a uh, uh, on her high horse, a lot of money. I don't think she she really knows a lot about reality. This uh, is Celine. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And, and she's commenting on the hurricane and the poor people and. Yeah, listen to that. As Larry King just sits there and says nothing. Yeah, listen to what she had to say. You know, some people are stealing and they're making a big deal out of it. Oh, they're stealing 20 pair of jeans or they're stealing television sets. Who cares? They're not going to go too far with it. Maybe those people are so poor. Some of the people who do that, they're so poor, they've never touched anything in their lives. Let them touch those things for once. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. She so says to... it all from Bill Burr. What is she? She's trying to like book a dra dramatic role or something. She's like trying to cry. Yeah, she's well, trying to win an Emmy she wants on a talk poor show. People to touch things that they'll never touch in that their lives. That they never touch. See, before the hurricane, they could have walked into Best Buy and touched the television. Yeah, touch <laughs> I think you can touch it. Right, you can touch it. You can buy it. But... To touch it, <laughs> just to touch these things, Larry. And uh, no, they're not touching. I think it, there's so many celebrities like down there. Like touching those people and doing all that type of shit. At this point, you need to cry. Yeah. To get to get any sort of face time. To make it seem like you really care, and to get yeah your face put on the news. You right. gotta break into tears. Yeah, you were. Who were you uh, talking about before the show? Oh, oh Sean, so, Sean Penn. Oh, well, the yeah. Sean Penn and the oh no, jo John Travolta. John Travolta, right? Just standing there with his hand on somebody's shoulder. As they're telling like the you know the the horror that they've been through, and meanwhile there's like 50 paparazzi. Like taking his picture, yeah. and like uh, over here, John. Two more over here. Could yeah. you look concerned in this direction? <laughs> okay, that's a wrap. People were out, and the guy's like right in the middle of his story. And then, then my grandmother was sliding down the stairs. All right, we gotta yeah. wrap this, people. <laughs> look, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ditches him. Uh, Bush did the same thing when he toured the area. All they had was pictures of him hugging and kissing black women. Oh, and then he's dressed like he's actually going to start cleaning up. Yeah, yeah, he's in his coveralls or something. <laughs> Let me help out uh, over here. I think we can all pitch in. He's got clothes for every occasion. You're so right. Yeah, he's up with the wardrobe van. <laughs> yeah. His big, those big rubber boots. I need some cleanup Sleeves clothes. Sleeves are rolled up. <laughs> yeah. He's completely dry with a full stomach. <laughs> Just Loading up some lumber in the back of the uh, limo, the presidential limo in the trunk. Pop the trunk. I think we need to clear some of this stuff out. Just That's like when they're on the ranch. Everyone has to dress like they're on Bonanza. <laughs> Everyone's got like cowboy vest on and shit. You know they're standing like this is so fucking gay. <laughs> it really is time to get rid of the cowboy hat. It's 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 yeah. not doing anyone any good. Like going out there chopping wood, just <laughs> right. filling the land. Here's this guy again. He bitched at us about the um, Laura Bush thing when we played it the the other day. Uh -huh. Sean from Old Bridge. Uh, it's great for you guys to make fun of Laura Bush because you both got perfect diction and uh, have never had problems pronouncing words. Good thing the hurricane wasn't put or hurricane finger. It, it's not a mispronunciation of the word because it's a wrong name. yeah, because you it's mispronounce a whole the word. Name. She she has no clue what the name of the most devastating hurricane to hit the country was. You hey, idiot, fucking moron! It's not a lisp or a stutter, right? It's not a, a word you've been mispronouncing for years of your life, and Can't other people then tell R's. you. Yeah, it's a whole different name. Yeah, it's a na she she. she it's even not stumbles. important enough for her to remember the hurricane's name. She even stumbles because she's like, "Oh my God, I don't know the name of the hurricane." Right. You yeah. Think she can't say Katrina. Sean M from Old Bridge, New Jersey. Yeah. Why I oughta? I just see that Bush thing again. Well, listen again and make sure we're uh, accurate about this. You know something? Is she mispronouncing Katrina or is she saying a whole different name? I'm banning Sean. Don't ban I'm him. I'm banning him from instant feedback. One click. No, don't ban him, Anthony. He's what? Just, no, no, don't. don't. He's just no. a stupid listener. Don't do it uh, to him. All right. It's he all he, one more chance. It's all he's got. One more It's chance. all he's got. Just let him be. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, listen. We'll listen again and see if uh, if he's right or if we're right. Is she just mispronouncing Katrina or is it a whole different name? You be the judge. Because of Hurricane Karina are starting to school this week. And I also want to encourage anybody who is affected by Hurricane Karina to make sure their children... Yeah, see, that no. stutter is her trying to remember the name of the what fucking the name hurricane. Was? Exactly. What's the name of that uh, devastating killer hurricane? Yeah, what was the name of that? Karina something like that. Jackass. 
Got to play this clip for Bill, too, before we move on. Celine Dion on Larry King. It is, you know, when, when I was hearing a couple of days ago that these things are not reachable, it's too full of water, maybe I'm too much like my, I'm not thinking with my head, I'm talking with my heart. Nobody can open any roofs. The yeah. helicopter's yeah. flying in. Take two people at a time. Take a kayak. Go into those walls. <laughs> There's kids being raped at night. We hear gunshots. Big guns. What's that? Those people are praying. They're walking. They're like this. Hello? Do you see us? We're still alive. But we're dying. Celine, it's terrible. How, I do, do not want to talk to you about money. I hate when these celebrities have to turn into <laughs> experts about stuff they don't know anything uh, about. Oh Take a God. kayak and ram into the wall. <laughs> Take a kayak through those walls. <laughs> those walls. Take a kayak. <laughs> put on some swimmies and just punch the walls in. <laughs> <laughs> put on some flippers and swim up the stairs. Get a snorkel and just do something. Karate chop the wall. <laughs> <laughs> there are people raped at the big guns. People are yelling. What is that? What is that? They're saying I'm alive. <laughs> it sounds like someone having a nervous breakdown while Absolutely. doing doing like bad stand up. <laughs> what is the deal with that? Is any of this funny? Why did they give you the peanuts on the airplane? <laughs> What's with those peanuts? How do you open the bag? You need to ram your finger in it? Why could the professor make radio out of coconuts but can't fix hole in boat? Those people were starving on island. Poor Gilligan would screw up rescue. Just get the kayak. Have the skipper punch through the wall. Why don't they use the headhunters' boats? They seem to be able to get from island to island. What is going on? <laughs> Just wrap the island with the headhunter's balls and push it back to shore. Go on. Why would the Howells have so much money on a three-hour tour? That money could be given to the starving people. Why? Why did I marry someone 42 years older than me with a shriveled up old cock that I had to suck like I enjoy it? He rams it in my face. Why? Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. They're all survivors. <laughs> oh, she's useless. Oh. You think she was punching her chest? Yeah, when she would sing. She, was, she would probably do that chest punch thing all passionate. Oh, man. Oh, hold on, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> all right. One more okay. clip from Celine. <laughs> we couldn't get enough of this the other day, and you know, Bill hasn't heard this. So oh, I love it. we got to play one more clip. We've been doing the show now for two and a half hours. We've been asking a lot of people how they can help, how you can help. A lot of people all over the world want to help. You gave a million dollars. You're going to help a lot of people live and survive. You should take great pride in that. One, that you've attained the ability to be able to do that, to be able to give a million dollars. You should take pride no, in that. It. I understand it's very important because eventually we will need that money. But it's just very frustrating that uh, Franco and Conscious West and me, oh, be a one million dollar. If this is one thing, in three months, in six months, they will need that money. Right now, they're praying for water. So we need to send them the water. They don't this care This should be her show check. in Vegas. <laughs> so I go. She it's just frustrating yeah, because on our parts of the show. world, we're trying we'll our best we'll and we're expecting you. those people. Ooh. Your check I'm will sorry. turn into something. <laughs> Larry's like, God damn, why do I have to deal with this? Oh, and... she's just fucking grandstanding. <laughs> Your check will turn into something. Urgh. What'd you think of Sean Penn going down there with his boat? I mean, yeah, if you got a boat, go down there and rescue people. I thought that was cool, but I just think it's weird. All the boats that are down there, somehow there's paparazzi all around your boat. It's no, like... he brought his own photographer. That came oh, out. Oh, he did. Yeah, yeah, that came out. He brought his own photographer oh, down there. Shameless. And then his boat, he forgot to put the uh, the plug in it or whatever, so he had a he had to try to get the water out of it. So had a picture of him bailing out his yeah, boat with so, a little red beer cup. Yeah, so he's frantically yeah, exactly left over from Mardi Gras. Yeah, that's what it looked like. <laughs> you know what I love though? He's like such like a like the Meisner actor that he actually took the time to grow the white trash mustache. Right, right. Because he totally looks the part. Like he's yeah. wearing, he had like a shotgun walking shotgun, up. Shotgun. He's wearing like a vest. 
Very yeah. dramatic. He's going to clean up this town. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was doing his part. Marshall. I mean, the guy, yeah, he did save some people, but aren't, aren't you supposed to, uh, the heathens pray in public? You know how it goes in the good book? In the good book. In the good book. What a tool. Well, we're all talking about hurricanes. <laughs> over that. Oh, and, uh, break down the walls. We got to get Martini Steve back in here because he interviewed our own Master Poe. Oh, right. This is hurricane related, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yes. I guess Master Poe was watching uh, some of the coverage and saw that this evacuation was a disaster and a lot of people died. And being in charge of uh, uh, people's lives here at the studio, our lives are in Poe's hands at some points. You know, do you know that? Yeah, I do. And if, uh, God forbid, a disaster like uh, Karina uh, swept across uh, Manhattan, what would we do? What would we do? He's not the brightest guy, I got to tell you. Jeez, old Pete. He just isn't. The other day after the show, we had I had a meet with Barry Shapiro, my Jewish basically business accountant guy. I don't even know what he does for us. He's, I, uh, I guess he's our, just finance guy. Our finance guy. He figures it out where to funnel our money. Typical Jew, no hair. <laughs> Jesus, Opie. <laughs> Typical Jewish guy, no hair. Jeez. A paunch. Like this guy wouldn't couldn't hurt anyone. So, <laughs> sucked in gym class. Oh, he, uh, he was the last guy chosen when he was picking sides. Yeah. Dude, I, next time I have a meeting with him, yeah. I'm going to record it because I swear to you it's another language that we don't know about yet. Yeah. He talks about stuff. I'm like, this is going on somewhere out there? There's all kinds like of he, financial things but that he, he knows, tells us about. He, na- like, he knows the latest laws and rules, and yeah. and it's unbelievable. So he bored me to death for at least 45 minutes. It is boring as hell. I'll give you that. And, I dread his meetings. And I'm leaving with Barry. And as a joke, I walk by Master Poe and I go, watch out for this guy. He throws a mean punch. Obviously, this guy right. th- doesn't even have a hint of muscle on him. Okay. He's, he's like a veal. Can't a lift veal his with, arm above his shoulder. He's a veal yeah. with a calculator. He stinks. <laughs> so the next day, I skate up. To Master Poe, who, you know, makes sure we're safe. And uh, Master Poe goes to me, hey, uh, that guy yesterday, uh, he throws a mean punch, huh? <laughs> like, Master Poe, it's, what? I, I couldn't believe you were buying that I was, I was serious. Here he comes. I go, Watch who? It, I go, who? And he goes, the guy you were walking out with yesterday after the show. I'm like, Master Poe, it's Barry Shapiro, he, he he doesn't know how to punch or do anything. How are you? How do you buy? How did you buy that? Well, I don't know his background. When you told me he throws a mean punch, you really can't underestimate anyone. Uh, he could anyone, be, that's even right. Barry Shapiro. Barry he, Shapiro. He could be ninety pounds and knock someone out. Wow. There was a skinny guy that fought. I, I don't remember his name, but he fought Muhammad Ali and he knocked uh, Muhammad Ali down. But he was in the fight game Leon to begin Spence. with. Well, yeah, this is true. Barry Sensei. <laughs> Barry Shapiro ain't hurting anyone. No, it's the, it's the martial art uh, mindset. Right. I Anyone's a threat. Any, any, anybody can That's be right. a threat. Look, Anyone's man. a threat, and he assesses everybody. But see, if you have that attitude, you'll never get to sleep at night. This guy obviously is not going to be a problem. Who says Poe sleeps at night? <laughs> <laughs> see him just sitting there. I'm going to figure out what the threat level is at any given moment. If Some people you could just look at and realize there's going to be no problem there. Well, sure. Let's be honest. I mean, Barry Shapiro. How not... old is the guy? Fifty something. Dude, the guy oh, hasn't okay. done a. I don't think he's ever done a sit up. I don't think be a... there was a fifty year old accountant. Yeah, who knocked out yeah. Joe Frazier. <laughs> you don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to underestimate a fifty year old out of shape Jewish accountant. Yeah, I'm oh. with you, Bo. <laughs> it's Jesus. on classic. Well, he sports. could have trained uh, for ten years before that. Who knows? Or when you he know was a what kid. it would be like? No, it. it would be like saying that the remember the time to make the donuts guy from Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> That's pretty much what this guy's threat level is. If you just look at him, he kind of it's like that. You wouldn't think the time to make the donuts guy would be any type of threat. Okay, well Bernie gets he's skinny. As a matter of fact, he's probably skinnier than this guy. Well, someone skinny is is a different story, maybe. Yeah, but this finger. guy isn't skinny. Yeah, it was that right. was all about yeah. Yeah, he had a gun. Right. True. I was talking about Barry physically hurting somebody with a punch. I yeah, said he I packs a mean punch. Right. Poe just sees it as, all right, I'm going to 
Free Free the world differently. Every martial artist out there will not underestimate their opponent. There you go. Free the cricket from uh, whackbag.com. Poe equals literal idiot. (laughs) Jesus. (laughs) Very brave through the Internet. (laughs) So uh, Martini Steve is in the studio. And uh, you interviewed Master Poe. Well, yeah, we were <clears throat> we were talking about uh, the the potential for a hurricane to actually hit uh, Manhattan, and I wanted to know, you know, <laughs> what what the evacuation plan would be uh, if God forbid a hurricane hit while we were all in the building. Uh huh. So we're up here, quite a few feet off street level. Right. <laughs> um, also, by the way. We are on the highest point in Manhattan. <laughs> this is, you know, right where we are. Right. It's downhill anywhere you go. <laughs> it's like east side, west side, you're right. going downhill. Right. Uh, I, I, I don't think we'd get the type of flooding here that we saw in New Orleans, which is below sea level. Well, you have to be prepared, and I just really wanted to hear what, what, what the plan Master might Poe be. Why is Mr. Poe giving you a look right now? <laughs> I don't What's know. What's wrong, Master Poe? Well, because we were having a discussion, and and he was just asking me his advice, because he said his wife was nervous. Didn't know that he was being recorded. So you were recording me. I (laughs) certainly was. Oh, yeah. This was, yeah, Master Poe had no idea we were going to. a scandal. (laughs) He didn't have an idea that we were taping this for the radio. Take a look at what I'm wearing, people. Do you think anybody wants a roundhouse kick to the face while I'm wearing these bad boys? (laughs) (laughs) Who is it, Linda Tripp? (laughs) <laughs> so it, it's not exactly the most the most uh, the the easiest interview to conduct, considering the fact that you know I, I know full well that this place is well above sea level, and I'm, right. I'm not an idiot. We're five floors up. Yeah. Well, but, oh, but wait a second. Takes everything seriously. Right. And you said that you wanted to leave. I mean, you're talking evacuation. Now, how would we evac? I think the safest place would be just to stay put here. Right. We'd probably stay on the air and just have a little fun. That's right. If there was a hurricane, we couldn't leave. I think. Well, what uh, happens if, it, if the power goes out? And all a right, now the power goes out. Right. Auxiliary power kicks on. We're back on the air. <laughs> do we have a good time? Of course we do. Everyone does in New York. Have you ever been in a completely blackout building? I certainly have. I was stuck at. Uh, it was stuck, stuck where? At, at NEW. Uh, the last blackout, and there's no auxiliary power there. So that sucks. Were you stuck in the elevator? Uh, no. Fortunately, stuck in the staircase. <laughs> so you could just walk down. When we did. We did, but you know, but it's but you're walking down. How many flights down was that? Nine. I have to follow Earl's Ooh, eyes whole and nine things. stories to get to freedom. Oh no, I'm not. You know, but he, he asked. But there's Smile, no, there's no Earl, generators. Light the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so uh, Steve interviewed Master Poe, and we got some audio. Master Poe had no idea we were interviewing him. Thank you. Apparently, I'm supposed to get with you about an evacuation plan. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> no, I mean, there's apparently a. a I guess I guess there's actually Steve, you're the biggest pussy. What? I, I can hear that you're nervous. No, I'm trying not to crack up. Are you sure? Oh, no, yeah. No. I don't I'm not afraid of what Poe's gonna do if he happens to get angry and, you know, knock my head off. You kinda have a nervousness to your voice like, oh god, I hope I don't piss him off. No, no, no. It's oh god, I hope I don't crack up. Alright, alright. There's apparently a uh I guess I guess there's because he's like slamming things around like oh, no I yeah. die, uh, he can I never hope this inf- goes okay he uh, can never infiltrate the mob <laughs> right and find the exactly. wire in like two seconds yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly he's a little nervous <laughs> from his voice you can tell something <laughs> up he's right. he's like, he's like, I am <laughs> I am trying to the desperately pouring off the yeah, <laughs> desperately trying to maintain my composure while asking questions without <laughs> bursting into fucking laughter you're right Steve. Uh, no, I'm not wearing a wire. <laughs> it just loses it immediately. I'm just a little wired. I mean, uh, <laughs> listen how natural Steve comes across. Thank you. Apparently, I'm supposed to get with you about an evacuation plan. I'm sorry. What? No, I mean, there's sounds like what? No. Uh huh. Sounds like it's written like bad acting. Like <laughs> right. They're reading. Scri- apparently, I'm uh-huh. supposed to. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Apparently, I'm supposed to get with you about an evacuation plan. Uh, I'm sorry. What? No, I mean, there's apparently a. Uh, uh, I guess. I guess there's actually now concern of this hurricane. Just get f- <laughs> oh fuck! You're kidding me. What are they saying? If. When is it hitting? If in the event that it hits this area, what is the? I guess. Uh. 
I guess, what would your recommendation be? <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> oh, that's shame. not a guy that thinks he's going to crack. Uh, is, uh, I guess. That's not a guy that's going to crack up at any moment. I'm trying to think how to phrase it. Yeah, I'm really just trying to think how to phrase it because I walked into this cold. I'm not buying it. <laughs> what, you think I I'm just, afraid? You I, honestly think I'm frightened? I no. think you're frightened. I'm sorry. Bill? Frightened or is I don't know. It sounds like a uh, bad soap opera <laughs> acting. I think he, yeah, that's what I think it is. Yeah. It's just bad acting. Yeah, and horrible the fact acting. That maybe he's a little shook up that this is being recorded. <laughs> right. Yeah. And he knows that his side is going to be on this also. Yeah. So he's got to maybe he'll be the one getting I, I, made I, fun I, I of. Would, I, I would I, I would agree with Anthony on that <laughs> one. It's 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 ba- I would I would totally fess up to bad acting and totally fess up to knowing it was being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> well, Poe, you've come back, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> a string of Pelopanese. It's <laughs> <laughs> awful acting. It's really bad. Uh, I guess what would your recommendation <laughs> be for an evacuation plan to get everybody out of here? Okay. Um, First, we have to find out when is it going to hit. I would assume. And six hours before it hits, oh. we're out of here. Okay. Now, one hour before it hits. Six what? hours before it hits. Now, okay. okay. Why six hours? What would that time frame allow? Well, I was involved with um, Hurricane Floyd, and I you stayed. Kicked his ass, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we we Drop stayed. Kick right <laughs> to the eye. Yeah. <laughs> care of that problem. No, we stayed in the house and we tried to fight this hurricane, and that was stupid. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the best thing for you to do is to get rid of your or, or take your clothing. Your electronics. well, we'll listen to the tape. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. just want to know why the six hours. That's all. Because six hours all give you time. also sounds kind of dangerous. <laughs> like then you're out of the building on a crowded evacuating road as the storm hits. All right, let's. Listen. I don't know. Let's I, listen. Uh, who am I to say? Yeah. Well, he's sitting next okay. to me. Because if anybody has ever experienced being in the hurricane, right, it's one of the worst things ever. Now you guys were up on top of this building, and and you know if we're if we stay here, most likely nothing's going to happen. However, depending on where we live, we may have to do some preparations in our homes. Okay. Make some preparations. I know I will definitely have to make right. some preparations. All right. So far, so good. Fairly normal. We'll move on here. If by chance that we are hit by a hurricane, let's say now. Yeah. And. The best thing for us to do is to stay here. Stay here? Well, it's too late. The hurricane hit us. If it's that bad... Oh, I see what you're saying. Because you know what's going to happen is you're getting... Okay, you, you won't be able to get a taxi. You won't be able to get a train. And it'll be difficult for you to get out, out of New York City. So Anthony will not... It's going to take him four and a half hours to get home. Hmm. So that's why we have to stay watch of this hurricane. If by chance the hurricane is going to hit us, then we have to be ahead of it. If the hurricane's gonna hit us at two o'clock, then we have to get out of here three, four hours preferably ahead of time. How much time for a slowy cane though? (laughs) (laughs) Because I would assume you got more time. No, that was that was wrong. That was wrong. If if the hurricane's gonna hit, just let's stay home. <laughs> stay home. <laughs> stay home. <laughs> We'd have enough so advance have notice. Have you done any research on this shit, or he just came in and asked the question? And you just went with it. No, I was hit by a hurricane. I was hit by a hurricane very bad. I lost my home in '99. We got a comedian coming up this weekend. <laughs> like and now the like, funny. Oh. <laughs> But but when Steve asked you, it's pretty much cold. You didn't know that you were going into this meeting to discuss evacuation. No, right? He said his wife was concerned. Yeah. All right, let's uh, continue listening here. Yeah, hurricane liver cirrhosis, maybe she'd be concerned with. But <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, say it's 7 o'clock in the morning and we get, you know, a heads up. Guys, get out of Dodge. Go now. What okay. do we do? How do we get open at home? How do we get... What we should have, what we should have outside. Oh, okay, Anthony is going to be driving home himself. I would assume. I don't know. Opie is probably going to need uh, to be driven home. He's not going to take a, a taxi or, or roller rollerblade. I mean, if if the hurricane is that bad, mm-hmm. then we would take him home. Well, look at that. You got taken home. I'll just let the hurricane blow me home. <laughs> I, don't have to use, I don't have to use my uh, legs when I'm rollerblading. You could put on your blades, and the breeze uh, would whisk you home. Whisk me home. <laughs> really nice and fast. 
I guess the question is, let's God forbid if we're all stuck here for Okay. Let's say we're all stuck in this What we should know. what we should do is have provisions. We should have our flashlights, we should have our food, we should definitely have our water. Mm-hmm. And we should have extra amount of that. Now, honestly, if the hurricane is that bad, we can see it on television. We can say, okay, well, guess what, guys? We shouldn't be here. It's going to hit New York City this date. Mm-hmm. Do not be here because this is going to be a deadlock. Mm. You won't be able to get in and out of the city. 9-11, same thing. You couldn't get in and out of the city. Right, right, right. And and the problem is that, okay, you have a hurricane, so now you have wind. If it, is it a tropical storm? The water's coming down so hard. You're driving, and then you, you, you're stopped because the rain is coming down so hard, people can't even see, see in front of them. Right. That's how bad it gets. <laughs> Painting quite the picture. Can you, someone had to really get in some feedback about... <laughs> I <laughs> basically uh something about Steve asking Master Boy to talk louder into his lapel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know the exact word. <laughs> guys, <laughs> just the worst fucking guy. I want to ask you a bunch of questions. <laughs> I want to have them answered immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, can you talk louder? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, posthorrors.net, uh, Clark, Master Poe, could you say that a little louder and say that might look bell? <laughs> That's a great line, bro. Poe's got a very dramatic delivery, though. He's very, he's very intense. He painted this horrific picture. Yeah. <laughs> like that uh, Day After Tomorrow movie. Yeah, yeah exactly. He's painting. <laughs> right, let's continue. So you're talking about barricading everybody in this place for a period of maybe several days. Oh my God! What kind of hurricane are we talking about? I don't know. I'm at. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, if you're I'm, talking about a a, a a severe, drastic hurricane that's coming in, first of all, why be here? Right. You know why? Because the only reason why we're here is to do a show. Well, guess what? We won't have any electricity. Oh. <laughs> Great answer, really? Steve. Yeah. I'm, I, I, answer. I can hear myself scrolling through the phone as I'm as, as I'm answering this. We won't have any electricity. Oh. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, you're really good at how you keep leading Poe to like other areas. I'm yeah. Terrible. Where the comedy can keep I coming. I am terrible. But you know what? You have to understand that I'm the only person in the in in the building at that point who's not going to lose his mind laughing. The option was me or Ben. <laughs> <laughs> that was the choice. When you when you when you throw those two in the mix, I think I was immediately elected. All right, more. Um, yeah, this point. Imagine no electricity, no computer ability, no access at all. Do you know what's going to happen here? Chaos. Either Opie and Anthony is going to make us all laugh, and Jimmy. Well, Jimmy's not going to be here, but Opie and Anthony is going to make us laugh, or they're going to go crazy and they're going to drive us crazy. <laughs> Maybe, may, maybe we can count on them to be entertaining, but who knows? <laughs> Good one, Steve. I, You're I, welcome. You get that one from Eric Logan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a couple more clips here. We're, we've already talked about how to get open and home, blah, 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 blah. What about you got interns that are coming from Staten Island, Jersey? How would they get home? We're talking about four kids who are going to have... Staten Island will be covered with water, gentlemen. <laughs> a tidal wave will wash over them, destroying the island. <laughs> I love the drama in Poe's yeah. voice. Very, very melodramatic delivery. Staten Island, write it off, kids. It's gone. <laughs> Four kids who are going to have frightened parents at home. And I'm assuming we're responsible for them. Of course. Okay, so if we're responsible for them, then either A... They stay here with with grown up adults that can handle the situation, or where, where are they? As opposed to those childlike <laughs> they adults, they get taken home. Um, but if we're worried about taking them home, and Anthony's going to be spending six hours getting home, getting to Long Island. Well, like I said, if it's going to be that bad, Anthony shouldn't come in. Right, right. If it gets that bad, then no one should be coming in. Right. Give the day off. Hey, we got some great and some feedback coming in. Rich from Allentown. If the hurricane floods, uh, floods, Anthony is screwed. He will not have any shoes from his shoelaces being wet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chris, from, away. Chris from Dallas, Texas. Hmm. 
Being trapped in an office with Steve the Bear and no food. Make sure you keep the cameras rolling, kids. <laughs> and Jimmy from Whackbag.com. Steve would hover above the water in his hybrid. Certainly would. All right. One more clip here. Steve and Master Poe talking about an evacuation plan. Or maybe not. Nope. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, here we go. All right, say you've got these kids. Let's say, let's say, God forbid, this fucking hurricane. We're all dumb enough to come in. He's getting this tough on him now. Yeah. yeah. Where do we take? Do you do you have the ability to house any of these kids? Would would you feel comfortable enough taking any any, any of these kids home? My place is big. If, if um, is it fixed up enough? Yeah, there's plenty of room. They'll just sleep with the dogs. With the dogs? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Jesus Christ, Paul. <laughs> Cruel fuck. Um. No. And then, I mean, shit, There's providing providing you, you could get out, could you take kids home? I don't know why you're smiling, because let me tell you, this is a horror for me, man. I just, I'm tired, I really, I, I hate having these fucking conversations. Because oh. I really do. I, I fucking hate it. This, yeah. is, this is what you call a nightmare, all right? And you're smiling, and I don't know why you're smiling. This was a nightmare. <laughs> all right. Okay. You shot in the head this in a destroys second. Houses, this destroys homes, this destroys families. You know what's making this bit better? The listeners. Uh, Brian from PostWars.net. Oh, yeah, you guys are just going to be sitting there telling jokes to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you kidding? Hope's going to be killing people for sport, and Anthony will be in the corner washing his hands for hours on end. <laughs> That <laughs> uh, goes on and on. And 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 while this is going on, I have I have uh, Ben and Wicklin in the other office, uh, and Don in the other room, yeah. phoning in questions. Oh, really? So I'm picking up the phone, thinking it's somebody else, and I'm playing it off, but it's Don and, and Ben in the other room phoning in questions. All right, well there you have it, Master Poe's uh, evacuation plan, courtesy of uh, courtesy of Steve. Wow, very good guys. Well, at least Thanks. we're all safe. <laughs> and he did know, that. you know, stay home. We would stay guys. home. <laughs> Where's the uh, the hybrid song? We gotta play that as Steve leaves the studio. Um, <laughs> no, hold on. A <laughs> Thanks, Master Poe. Thank you guys. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was riveting. Yeah, wasn't it? Terrible. <laughs> Where's you the, are uh, really bad, Steve. I know. Where's the hybrid song? Well, again, you know, it's it's either me or or it's Ben. And you you you, you want Ben trying to conduct an interview like that? No. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. Can't find it? No. Oh, uh, this won't bother you too much. Is this the one? Oh, okay, good. Is that it? All right, Steve. There goes the... Uh, <laughs> Whoa! My shit! Bye-bye! <laughs> this is from Chemistry as we go to break. I know a big bear. He talks with good diction, hibernates in Toyota with good fuel emissions and great tax deductions. His habitat's a hybrid. His paws are on the steering wheel. He barely fits inside it. His cave has XM and a keyless entry. Don't leave a scent in your tent. His belly is empty. The only bear I know a gastric bypass, smarter than the average. Roll up in the hybrid and steal your picnic basket. The ranger's lunch always makes his belly groan. The last I seen him, he was speeding round Jellystone, getting 40 miles per gallon, rolling through the Rockies, doing Ramon promos for two this jockeys, Steve's a piece of garbage, forged for nuts and berries, top of the food chain, but drives a car for fairies, piece of shit, stores energy with friction and magnets, Ramon, hybrids are for faggots, hybrids are gay, Steve's a queer, plug in your automobile, you take it in the rear, you homo, yo his car got a kickstand, go and buy a new one, spend more than six grand, hybrids are gay, Steve's a queer, if you plug in your automobile, you take it in the rear, you homo, his car got a kickstand, Stand, go and buy a new one. Spend more than six grand. Hybrid something. Hybrid something. All right, we're hanging with Bill Burr today. Don't Hola. forget to watch Bill Burr on HBO tomorrow night at midnight. This half-hour comedy uh, special airs. And if you got HBO on demand, like me. Get to watch it whenever the hell you want. That's right. 
<laughs> go hang out at a friend's house or kill your best friend who has HBO. <laughs> oh, steal yeah. his cable. You hear about this story? I what? just did. Animal. Anthony has all the details. I was just going to read the story, but uh, oh, yeah, if you just want the details. Well, I'll, I'll do the first paragraph and then you can oh, fill right. in the blanks, okay? Long Island sex den shocker killed for his house. A 20-year-old or- wow, he was an orphan too. Yeah. A 20-year-old orphan who was living alone in his dead mom's Long Island home was murdered <laughs> by his two best friends because they wanted to use the house as a sex den to sleep with their girlfriends, police said yesterday. Sex den. I don't know why they're bringing the sex angle into the story. It's the press. they got to make it sound you know, Sexier. even worse than it is. But uh, it just seems like these guys, well, they were friends of this guy. There's two guys. And uh, they were friends with the third guy, the orphan. He had inherited this house from his mom, who had died uh, five years earlier. And uh, so he's kind of a young guy. I guess he's 20, 21, and he's got a house. Wait, Michael Moore's dead? That's what it says. Michael Moore's dead? I think it's a yeah. different one. What are the liberals going to do? Um, I don't know, but I th- it might be a different one. Oh, it's a different one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. If I don't think <laughs> Michael Moore's living in Freeport. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and uh, so he's like 21 years old. He's got uh, his own house, his own car. Uh, from what I read in there, a plasma TV. So he, he had uh, a few bucks. A lot of nice things to touch. Some nice things. Just let them touch it. <laughs> let them just touch the kayak. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Slamming into the wall trying to figure out how to go yeah. through a wall. <laughs> kayak. How many times would you have to slam a kayak into a wall before it would give? How many you need some you... sort of motor. Yeah, you need a motorized kayak, and then at that point, I don't think it's a kayak you anymore. You need like four Samoans. <laughs> Do you back up the kayak like twenty feet and then paddle and then... real fast? <laughs> yeah. uh, here it goes. Dunk. Oh man! <laughs> and then you back up again. You got to paddle harder. <laughs> paddle your kayak. <laughs> Moron. <laughs> Do you jump forward in the kayak just in the last second to give it that last oomph? Uh, Would it, yeah. Does that help at all? Who knows? What a dummy. Yeah. Sorry, Anthony. That's all right. The, uh, the, so this guy had a few items, possessions, and a house. And he had these two uh, other guys as friends. They were friends. He used to come over the house, hang out with them. Uh, and then one day they got a brilliant idea because these two gentlemen that committed the murder uh, had girlfriends that they couldn't sleep with, I guess, because they lived with their parents. You can't bring the girl home because your parents will be angry with you. So they came up with a great plan, uh, just an airtight plan here. <laughs> Going to work very well. <laughs> Kill your friend, put him in the basement, and you just move into his house. Can I ask you guys something? We've all had friends. Uh huh. What's the worst thing your friends have ever done to you? <sighs> Maybe write dick on your forehead because you had too much to when drink you're one sleeping, night. When you partying a little bit too Shave much. off an eyebrow. Right. Shaved off an eyebrow, maybe. Something like that. Good. Do the old gag with the warm water. Put your yeah. hand in there so you pee yourself. I think I once had, uh, you know, like shaving cream in my hand and they, and they tap my face it. while I was asleep and I splat. When you go to scratch, yeah, you get shaving cream on your face. That's yeah. probably it. That's probably the worst your friends have done probably. to you, right? But these friends are a little different. They sure are. Well, they saw. But they probably approached him with the idea, can we use your house as a sex den? And when he said no, evidently these guys had a zero tolerance on <laughs> cock blocking. <laughs> and they rubbed him out. You think he was like a dick friend? I would think that they would have approached him. You think it hey, just doesn't I, go... To... Can I fuck my girl on your couch? Yeah. No. You no. sure about that? <laughs> I want you to really think about your answer here. <laughs> because the consequences. Yeah, you better. Put it this way. I'm fucking the girl on the couch. Yeah, regardless. <laughs> you're either going to be here or not. So they yeah, you're him. right. They probably didn't just go, hey, let's kill the guy. It was probably ask him. But then, then, then they kill prick. him and they just leave him in the basement. They don't, yeah. they don't do anything. No, the second you start wheeling that body around, now you got a problem. See, they were thinking ahead. <laughs> so they put him down in the basement. And they had parties and sex with the girls and everything like that and but, moved into his place. I'm Used sure that's, his car. I'm sure that's good for the first 24 hours. Yeah. Well, the dead body's just kind of sitting there with its mouth open downstairs. Think it creep you out a little bit. Well, it'll creep you out a little bit, but I think you you get you, yeah you you, you barrel ahead. You their their whole it. plan was like the first draft of a bad movie script. There's like 200 holes in it, they, but they yeah. they didn't fix it. They you just don't fucking, think that far ahead. Yeah, they went with the first draft. 
You got a great first scene. <laughs> How long does it take for a body to really start smelling? Start smelling a couple of days. A couple of days you got? Yeah, a couple of days it's over, Johnny. So the the first two Summer days. Summer months. Come on, man. But the first two days you're sitting there like, look, look what we got. This is cool. No one's going to know. Is there any regret, though, after, like, all right, you kill them. You immediately call the girls. They come over. Now you're banging. You shoot. You're laying there, relaxed. Ah, do you think then it creeps in like, holy shit, we killed our friend. Yes. It's got to be trouble. That's yeah. like when you hook up with some girl you shouldn't be fucking right as you start to come. You're thinking, oh, fuck, what did I do? <laughs> That's what they were thinking. Ah, why did we kill him? Could have just knocked him out. Get an assault charge? Yeah. Could have tied him up for a couple of days. And I, I always thought that. Fed him some food. The crackhead. You always read every so often the cracker that killed his grandma to get the money oh, yeah. to buy the crack. Yeah. He smokes the crack. He's feeling all good. You think right when you start coming down, you're like, I killed grandma. Uh, yeah. God damn, why did I kill grandma? I think I might have a problem. Yeah, you oh, got to start man. thinking. I, I better smoke some more cracks. So yeah, I don't you, start you need some more crack. thinking this. Right. So, and these guys must have you know, gotten done with their first party after killing the guy. So think, far, so good. But then they continued. They used his car. One what? of the neighbors, kind of creepy. Uh, his Lincoln Continental. Yeah, he had a Lincoln Continental with all tinted windows. And some of the neighbors said, wow, I was waving at the car as it was driving by, thinking it was the neighbor who was already dead. And wow. uh, they were waving at the guys that, that had killed their neighbor. Uh, and they were using the car, driving around, picking the girls up, partying. So far, Sex our plan Den. is, uh, go ahead. Sex Den just sounds so seedy. Yeah. It wasn't really, I don't think it was so much sex den as, you know, sex den sounds like they're bringing prostitutes in, using it for a business, different girls. They just, dude, they were guys that wanted to have sex with their girlfriends. A sex yeah. den. And it sounded like a good plan for the first two days. Guy had a house, had some nice things. What happened after the two days? They stole a few items too, stereos, and so, sold them, mm -hmm. uh, made a little cake. And then, uh, I guess during one of these parties, <laughs> they noticed it started to stink in the house. Their friend was rotting. And uh, they had to do something about it. So they, it said they put him in bags, pluralized. Plastic mm. bags and dumped it into the East River. The where East River. It was discovered in the Bronx 12 days after the slaying. 12 Let me days. Guess they found the torso. The torso. Now, maybe they just used numerous bags to cover the one part body instead of hacking them up and putting them in different bags and then throwing it. Regardless, the cops uh, were identified the guy. They figured out who it was. So they go to the guy's house, start talking to the neighbors. The neighbors are like, uh, wow, he's dead. I didn't know because there are people coming and going from his house. As a matter of fact, they're still living there. <laughs> so, so, There's uh, one sitting on the front porch yeah, reading the paper right now. without a worry in the world. And uh, they arrested these two. I can't imagine what the defense is going to be. They are the, the defense always comes up with some wacky reason why... This you think happened. if you're that fucking stupid at any at any point during your jail sentence, mm -hmm. you actually just think of how you know you got one life. This is what you did with it. Yeah, hey, you have to. They did not think further than a day or two ahead in this whole thing. You don't kill someone premeditated, obviously, mm -hmm. some kind type of premeditation to their murder, and you know you go all right. What happens when people start realizing this guy's missing? What do we do with the body? What happens if it's discovered? What happened? Did none of that went on? It was like, God damn, I gotta fuck my girl. <laughs> That's as far as they went. You gotta think you you have to go for a long drive. Yeah, you know, you don't just let it sit in the basement for a few days. Yeah, why? You would think that's all planned out ahead and of time. Usually, you leave the scene of the crime. You don't move into it. Move in right there, the scene of the murder. The first place they're going to go. <laughs> Outline of the body and you're two feet away and a lazy boy with your feet up. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> you look around. That's all right. I'm just watching the plasma TV. <laughs> yeah. You look whatever you want. Where is he? I don't know. I don't know. Unbelievable. Didn't think at all. And the body, what, you dump the body in the river. It's coming back. It's coming back. No, you have to, you have to fuck up the torso. You think you know, that's how you sort of the, the bacteria in the intestines? Yeah. That after you die, somehow it, it li turns into gases. Mm -hmm. That's why they always say police found a headless torso. Right. So you remember that book, The Westies? I told you to read. That's right. what they I used never to read do. It. Yeah, they used I'm to. Sorry. You they gotta used to chop the whole thing up. Chop yeah. it up. So, so anybody thinking back. about that, that's what you want yeah. to do. I'm reading another book called Rats. 
They so. had the car, though. <laughs> Rats. Yeah. Go ahead, Anthony. What you do, you, why not put the body in the trunk and you take them somewhere like real... Why not get a fucking motel for like 28 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, after they've done this. Huh? Not beforehand while you're actually thinking and going, well, I just, you know... Get a few bucks, get a hotel Banger room. Banger in your car. Banger, right. Yeah, anything but killing your friend. Anything <laughs> else but that. I'm just thinking afterwards. They never go far away enough. Why not? Obviously, they're, they're not working. Put them in the car. Drive to Washington State. Go into the woods and bury him somewhere. What's wrong with that? Get By the time drunk. they find him, figure out who, where, what, what. I would ah. just get in the car and drive for 12 hours in one direction. Just 12 hours. 12 hours. And when the 12 hours is up, good enough. Find, find a spot. Find a secluded place. Dig a nice hole, dump it, and then drive the 12 hours back, and I dump can still out. go to work the next day. You know, like they'd Billy find Bats. something. They'd find the texture of the dirt. Don't they always? The grooves of your tires. <laughs> in the tire. I get irritated when I watch that, like... It's almost like it's not even fair at this point. <laughs> right. the, the cop will like dig a piece of dirt out, send it to the lab, and Bing, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh yeah, pops up. <laughs> this dirt is the only uh, they only have it in Tulsa. You and they know exactly where it came from. You make a good point. The, the cops at this point have the the upper hand. Oh, they really always. Know. You can't get away with this stuff they anymore. Find out you ever that see one where the guy hair? suffocated the girl with the garbage bag, and like somehow they they saw the imprint it's of like her face. Like the shroud of Turin. Of her face right there on the ba the bag, the plastic. Yeah. He tells that story in prison, and I bet those they're riveted. Yeah. Like, like, get gotta, the fuck yeah. out of here. The best they caught me murder in progress. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> your shit is just like, 12 years, this fucking person is dead. One yeah, of their fillings find... fell out. I, I... Some guy with a fucking <laughs> crumb brush in my backyard <laughs> find it in the <laughs> between some blades of grass. Now I gotta go to jail, worry about getting raped every day. I mean, what? You had it knocked. After 12 years, you gotta think, God damn, did I get away with this shit. Yeah, my house totally isn't haunted, away. nothing came back from the grave. Oh, right. I'm in the clear. <laughs> Haven't had a visit from a cop, nothing. It's just not fair anymore. And then, police department, what the fuck happened? Yeah. I love it though, right? When they just find one stupid, like, pinky bone. And Anything. They, they know the race, the age. How the fuck? It's amazing. Yeah. It's uh, the it's CSI not, it's shows. <laughs> I watch those all the time, and uh, yeah, guaranteed, about 48 minutes in, I go, you got to be fucking <laughs> kidding me. <laughs> he had the perfect crime, or did he? Yeah. <laughs> How'd the body be on the grave? <laughs> Solve this murder case. The dead speak. Yeah. yeah. How the body talks beyond the grave, right? I watch oh, all those shows on A&E, the real ones. Like, not the CSI or the fake ones like that, but the real ones on A&E. Oh, yeah. With that guy, what's his name? The creepy guy. Bill Curtis. Oh, Bill Curtis. I'm Bill Curtis. Well, is, it his, is he creepy or is it the the, the piano in the background? That's... Bill Curtis yeah. has just that creepy voice. Bill Curtis is really creepy. A body of a girl found on the side of the road, raped and decapitated. The police went to work. And then the case goes, yeah, 12, 15 years. And then there's always... But one cop wouldn't let it go. Yeah. <laughs> he digs into this closet, like picks this lucky box to pull this like cold case down. And there's the guy that thought he got away with it because one prick can't fucking just go home to his family one night. <laughs> Late one night, he decided to go into the cold case closet. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> Go home to your family, uh, you cop. Finds DNA in a toothbrush from 1972. <laughs> right. One bristle. Oh, it's a perfect match. Yeah. When the crime happened, they didn't have this type of testing. <laughs> Great, thanks. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the most fucked up yeah, thing. Yeah, we because... gotta worry about what they're gonna invent. In yeah, the future. yeah. You, you have all bases covered for right now. Yep. And in 2026, you get the knock on the door. <laughs> right. They'll let you know you'll be being raped. They work it out for your final 25 years. Yeah. <sighs> You're an old guy. Yeah. That's the only good thing about that story. I mean, as far as like. I always put myself in the position of going to jail. Looking at those two guys' headshots, they will not be uh, getting raped. They no, will be not the at all. rapers. There's two more rapists in prison. Their necks are too wide. You couldn't hold them down. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's go to Utah with that. Ivan. Hey. How's it going, boys? Hey, hey man. Hey, does this story mention which racial origins these two guys killed? Uh, I believe all three of them uh, involved in this crime, the perpetrators and the victim were black gentlemen from Freeport, Long Island. But it's kind wow. of, it's, it leans toward a freaky crime, so I was thinking that it could have been white dudes. 
Mm, no, it would have to be devil worship related. Yeah, this was just you think? Blunt, yeah. blunt force. Was violence. it obvious that it was black guys, you think? Uh, yeah. Because us whiteys, yeah. we, we pull the weird crimes. This is definitely has black guy written all over it. If it's white, like in Northport, you get a, a very white neighborhood, and uh, one kid was killed by his friends, and that turned out to be Satan worship. Remember that one? Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, whenever it's Satan worship, you won't find a black guy around. It's always white guys. Uh, something like this, though, where you just want to break in, maybe steal some uh, stereo equipment, live in the guy's house, use his car. Yeah, that's the weird thing about black people. Like, they can ride the subway at 4 in the morning and totally relax, but yeah. you even bring up the devil and they freak out. Yeah, oh, no, I ain't going in. Yeah, it's the exact opposite with us. We're like... Yeah. Yeah. Sitting around painting with pentagrams yeah. on the floor <laughs> and drinking whiskey in the woods. One, one other thing. Which are creeps. One other thing as we discuss this uh, topic. The shallow grave. Yeah. Enough on. with the shallow grave. Put a little eff effort into it. That, that just screams no planning. Yeah. Like, just no the, planning. Just I want to get out of here. A couple more pushes with the shovel. That's all you have to dig. do. Dig. Dig a little. You've already committed. Kill in the summer when the earth is soft. Right. And you can go six feet under. The shallow grave is, is just... Always ends up a hand poking <laughs> right. through a, a ditch in the ground. A nosy dog. Doesn't even refill it. <laughs> yeah, nosy what is it? A shallow grave. Leaves? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Leaves and a little like dirt. A hole and some leaves. Yeah, and the dog always finds it. Some farmer decides to look at some acreage he had that he hadn't walked on in 50 years. Uh, there has to be some. People are doing them right. Because yeah. there's a lot of people missing. There's some people, you know. Obviously, way, we don't know about the missing ones, yeah. but they're missing. But way someone's up in the mountains. Right. Yeah. They go seven feet down. Seven feet. No one's <laughs> digging that deep. No one. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, crop circles, Bigfoot, and the Loch Ness Monster. UFOs. Ooh, that one looks good. Very cool. Is it real? That. Monday. Yeah, we talked on about the, this guy. On the, what is it, History Channel? Oh, the National Geographic Channel. Okay. I like that one, too. It's a good channel. Chris from Boston. Uh, how cool is that psycho Dr. Michael Baden? That's or the Baden guy. from uh, the forensic uh, guy from HBO. We talked about him last week, I yeah. think, right? There's a show called Coroner, whatever it is, on uh, HBO. And this guy, what, what is it called? Autopsy. Autopsy. Yeah, Autopsy okay. on HBO. And this guy is a coroner. And he, uh, he discusses cases that he helped solve after the victims just been cut up and he's gone through their stomach and their brains and uh i remember one case he found it was he, he i got the murder because the time of death didn't line up with the guy's alibi because he went into the stomach and found french fries that they had eaten <laughs> just fucking um, at a restaurant and they knew exactly what time they had been at the restaurant and uh they weren't digested enough for the timeline to have been accurate for the guy that was with the girl. <laughs> Jesus, dude. The I'd, be the, I'd be the worst defense attorney because my only response you got to be shitting yeah, me. Right, right. Did this guy ever miss a class in high school and just decide to drink beers with the, the guy they, in the they, parking lot? They found that the fries had oh, serrations fuck. in them from a knife, a serrated knife, and uh, they were still visible in the stomach, which means that... And they know how stomach acid would have dissolved it away and mm -hmm. at what rate and how these serrations would have been gone in a certain amount of time. And since they were still there, she was murdered uh, a lot closer uh, to the time of dinner than the guy was saying. And boom, guilty. And you know how they know all that stuff? Yeah. I read a book called Stiff. They got death fields somewhere in the middle of the woods. Oh, we like, heard about the death fields, yeah. yeah. Somewhere in like Virginia uh. or somewhere. I don't know. And they have all these scenarios, and they, they just take cadavers that get they their, just uh, lay bodies dead bodies science. all over the woods, uh, maybe in a car, you know, to you yeah. know simulate a car crash, shallow grave, shallow grave. Please tell me there's a fence around this area, so <laughs> people are just kind of wandering. <laughs> you don't just into the stumble death through it. <laughs> <laughs> That'll stick with you for a while, I think. It was the sickest part of this book called Stiff, which was a book all about uh, what they do with dead bodies. They had one wrapped in a carpet. Yeah, they just all these the scenarios, woods. like someone that's wrapped up in a carpet and thrown in the woods, mm -hmm. someone that's found in a trunk of a car, someone that is this and that. It gives them like a, a But it's all base. The, the dumb shit yeah. that you do after yeah. a spontaneous yeah. murder. And they uh, they study the uh, the bodies and, and what happens as they rot and stuff, and what bugs appear and this and that. So if they find a, a And they body do all their rotted, research that way. They, they know 
by uh, the case that they put in the uh, that they know how long. Can you imagine that's your job though to go into the death field? You open up that gate of these creepy woods and there's all these dead bodies, some hanging from trees because that's some kind of weird scenario and this and that and and they go in and uh, and study the, the corpses. That's yeah, that has to fuck with you. I, I don't, don't know, know how people do that. How do you get that line of work and not just go home ah! Ah! <laughs> every night, wake up in cold sweats with nightmares? <laughs> I can't watch. How do you go down that progression? Okay, you take a science class, take biology. All right, it's probably like, the way it starts. It's kind of interesting. We all dissected the frog, right? All right, kind of yeah. like in that. Yeah, like that. How do you end up planting a body in the Neighbor's death field? Neighbor's dog's a little old. <laughs> <laughs> you think you start getting this fascination? Yeah, and you just kind of maybe, you know, help him along to his yeah. final journey. Maybe do a little Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah. Just start moving up a little bit. I think you're the guy also that helps the neighbors out when one of their animals die. And they go, yeah, our, our cat died or something. They're the first one to go, I'll take care of it for you. There's got to be a crossroads there where you either pick, uh, right, you either I'm pick... causing this or I'm solving it. You either go right. the serial killer route. Absolutely. I think there is that crossroad. You can either become the serial killer that's planting the bodies there, or the guy that, uh, th- because there's there's a fascination. There's got to be a passion and a fascination for dead bodies and working with them. Yeah. Whether it's for your own pleasure. Uh, I asked my dad about that shit. He's like like in the medical field. Yeah. And I said like, how do how does somebody become like like a proctologist? Why would you choose that? Why out of all? The and he places. was just kind of laughing. He's just like, well, you know, you go and the, you do the cadaver thing and all that. And after a while. I guess the whole thing's kind of disgusting in a way to intrude yeah. in a body. And he's like, you know, it's a good paying job. <laughs> like, you just start thinking, hey, you know, I'm making strong six figures a year. Uh, it's down to the money. Uh, oh, the first time you just poke somebody in the ass, you got to be laughing. I'm <laughs> just horrified the first time. You think it's like, because it is the first time, so you got to be like, here it comes. It's my first time I'm sticking my finger up a guy's ass. Uh, uh, Pull it out, you. <laughs> I mean, how do you? This is that third grader in all of us. You're just gonna fucking lose it. Start laughing. Hey, uh, Brad, Cleveland, what's up? Hey, what's going on, fellas? Hey, man. Hey, just wanted to check in. When I was a kid, when I grew up in the country, basically, there was a bunch of murders that they had way out in the boonies. And what they were doing was hacking up the bodies and actually feed them to the pigs, because the pigs would eat anything and everything in its sight. Ah, uh, you're getting your info from the movie Snatch, aren't you? And from uh, no, from Ooh. Deadwood. No, uh, Deadwood did that whole thing. Yeah, too? they do. They feed him to the pig. Thing. We got to get that clip from Snatch. How he explains how to get rid of a body by using pigs. It's deeply, deeply disturbing. Uh, let's go to Tom in New Hampshire. Tom, what's going on, buddy? Yeah, hi. How you doing, boys? All right. Hi, Jimmy replacement. <laughs> Um, <laughs> <That's hilarious. laughs> during your last break, I switched over to Imus, and uh, one of the callers was trying to get him to say that his favorite station was the fan. Yeah. And he said, oh, no, my favorite station is Opie and Anthony on 202 on XM. Bravo. Hey, there you go. This guy, uh, he's just a great friend in the business, helping us yep. out. All right, thank you. Thank you. I heard uh, Don Imus went and visited the body farm, and they tried to plant him. <laughs> they, uh, assumed <laughs> mistaken identity. Dan in uh, Raleigh, what's up? Hey man, I got to tell my thunder. I'm an Imus listener too, and I was going to tell you the same thing. Hey, does anyone listen to our show while we're doing our show? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they got to keep an ear open for yeah. everybody else. Well, that's the beauty of the replays. You can Don Imus to a really could just work in a haunted house, like no makeup. <laughs> Boo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big stupid cowboy hat yeah, like he's, he's a got rebel. His cowboy hat. <laughs> Fucking 78 years old. Uh, uh, Jack in Manchester. What's up, Jack? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. Uh, when I was a kid, there was this kid named Shane Tetz. Uh, he was like on my school bus. He was a babysitter and shit. He lived right behind me. He uh, took a bunch of acid and killed his pregnant girlfriend. Like, took a revolver, shot her six times, reloaded it, shot another three. Wow. Wrapped her up in an old oriental rug, buried her in the wine cellar. Wrote a whole note to the parents. I'm missing my. I'm missing her. I don't know where she went and stuff like that. Bought a bus ticket. Did the whole thing. Got caught because his brother's dog was digging at the dirt in the wine cellar. So that's how he ended up getting caught. Go to jail and ended up becoming somebody's bitch and overdosed on heroin like two years ago. Wow. See Good at the, story. At that point, you got to kill your pets and stuff because they know a little more than us. They love rolling around in that dead meat. <laughs> exactly. They, they're going to rat you out. Their senses are a little stronger than ours. Yeah. Right off the bat, you got to kill your dog if you're going to bury a body in your house. 
You never, you know, buried in your house. Not in your house. Those are real nuts that want them close to them, I think. Ugh. Like John Wayne Gacy, putting all of them down in his uh, crawl space, and yeah. he'd have lime down there and dig the holes, bury them, and then put lime over them. And, and, uh, How do you he, sleep at night? That, that, But it was part of it. He loved having the bodies that close to him. It was like he was a collector, so... He, I think he he's, he's the creepiest out of all of them. Yeah. Clown. Uh, he was a, like a party clown. Here's all the features of What was of going on in the 70s spook. when you could fucking drive around dressed as a clown in a van and nobody With was looking at you? With a dead body in the trunk and no one's, no one's looking, looking. your your background. Well, the drugs were a lot better back then. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go uh, to Tennessee. Ben, what's up? Hey, man. Um, you guys are great, by the way. I've been loving you for uh, about six months now. And um, we care why. I was a coroner up in uh, <laughs> Virginia, and they brought me a hand. Well, they called me at 2 in the morning and said, we got a, a, a hand we need you to look at. And uh, it ended up being um, being like a child's hand, but we we uh, investigated further, and it ended up being a bear paw, and just kind of screwed everybody up for a while. They started the manhunt. It, it was uh, it was pretty interesting. They mistook a bear paw for a hand. yeah. It's easy to confuse. You know, we, we did X-rays, and it didn't quite look right. And then we called the chief. Gave it away you know, I got a similar story. When uh, I was living out there in Huntington, my landlord was digging up the front yard. No, digging up the porch. That's right, because uh, part of the porch in the front of the house was rotting. Mm -hmm. So he was, he was going to, you know, redo the porch. And he's digging up, I guess, to, you know, get some studs in the in the ground or whatever. And uh, all of a sudden he found some bones. And they didn't look like, they looked like human bones. Were they big? Yeah. Yeah, and they looked like they could be bones from, like, a, a child. Oh, so he was uh, X N Y uh, P D, and, and he, you know, he works for the fire department and all that. So he, he thought I better do the right thing. So he calls the cops. They completely took over the house, yellow taped the whole area. That's great for the neighbors. Oh yeah, <laughs> cops seeing that going on. Cops everywhere. I come home, you know, because I'm renting uh, from this guy. All the cops that are there are fans of the show. <laughs> so now they're starting to think crazy shit in their heads. Like, I, kn I knew he was a wacko on the air, but wait a minute, what's going on here? And they're kind of hinting, like, you might want to stay close, because they really don't know what the hell's going on. It's oh, so early boy. in the investigation. I'm like, what? So we had to wait around all day, I, I don't know, like four, six, four to six hours, let's say, and they finally came back from the lab saying, all right, and then, you know, it was like a pig or a pig bones or, pig or bones. orangutan. Or, I forgot exactly. Honestly, I forget now. I, I'm, I'm, I don't remember exactly what the bones, mm -hmm. it was some animal, you know, that, uh, you know, the bones were under the porch for whatever reason. That's odd. But for an afternoon, it was all... There's still something good. Something the yellow tape was, Yeah, something definitely something strange yeah. there. The Unless somebody got drunk and planned on doing one of those pig pit barbecues and forgot about it. <laughs> Burying them under the ground with the coals and then uh, forgot. But for an afternoon, it was... Uh, <laughs> pig picking. Yeah. That's what it's called. A, pig, a lot of pig excitement. Pig picking. Let's say hi to Dave in Tennessee. Dave. Hey, good morning, guys. All right. What's up? I was just, uh, I had read a book on that body farm. It's just outside Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh, there's one in Knoxville, Tennessee? Okay. Yeah, and I guess it was started by, on a university over there, and they bring, like, coroner students in from all across the country, and it's just like you were saying, it's, this is what it's a plastic bag after five days, there's gonna be this kind of bug on it. I mean, it is amazing. Yeah, they have all scenarios, fun. you know, people that are, like, wrapped up in, yeah, exactly, garbage bags and rugs and, I don't know, if, don't know if I want to live next door to that, though, man. They, I guess they have 50 to 100 bodies in, at any given time. Yeah, just rotting away. Oh, after you do it, there's no way to watch a horror movie and even be remotely scared at that point. Mm. You're just <laughs> so clinically Stop looking at right. yeah. the makeup. Oh, yeah, it's like a trunk. Seven yeah. days in the sun in July. I can't even watch some of those scary movie trailers anymore at night. They've gotten really creepy. They've gotten they, very real. They've gotten just creepy, where I can't take the uh, the surprise out of nowhere shot. Like, uh, they, they show some guy, and he's sitting on a couch or something, and he bends over to grab something, and the camera follows him as he grabs it. When he leans back, there's someone sitting next to him out of nowhere. Uh -huh. That shit kills me. I cannot watch it. I, 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 I avert my eyes from the television like a pussy. Yeah, horror night. movies are back. They They... they sucked in the 80s. Yeah, they turned into just the slasher things I could watch. So who cares? You know, like Jason and those things. Not scary. But the ones that are like the creepy, distorted faces and little children are always creepy in movies. Oh, yeah. And they've made a big 
come back in movies now. Creepy children. Ever, yeah, ever since The Shining with those two twin girls in the hallway, just creepy. And now they put kids in movies all the time. You hear the little, <laughs> oh, get me out of here. I'm not watching. Did you did you uh, did you like Blair Witch? A lot of people are like, eh, yeah, I thought it was pretty creepy. I felt, I went to that by myself. I was living in L.A. Yeah, the twelve thirty show after I worked at like oh, a lap no, Oh my nuts? god, <laughs> that last shot with a dude standing in the that, fucking corner. That's what got me. Then I walked out to the uh, through the parking garage by myself. Whoa. Freak the <laughs> fuck out. I can't take stuff like that. And some people say that sucked. It was not. And other people, scariest thing they ever saw. Yeah, that a lot of people saw creepy. Blair Witch. Was just I was laughing the whole time. Well, that fuck was fucking lame. I bought it from the second it was on. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's one of those movies you had to get in early, you know. You yeah. You had to yeah, watch yeah. it early before everyone started uh, really talking about it. Same with like Sixth Sense. Sixth Sense was creepy as all hell too. That chick puking and the friggin' underneath the and his little fort thing when he runs in it and there's yeah. people out there and the mother in the kitchen and the just creepy shit. Usually I see uh, the endings of movies coming, like, no problem. That was one of the only movies where I actually stood up in the theater when they had the twist at the end. And I actually actually stood up and went, no fucking way. <laughs> I, I just lost my mind. Like, they fucking tricked us. And it was a full theater, but I was just taken by, you know, what they did. It was the only time I got yeah. out of my seat and actually said something in a movie theater. The Ring. The Ring, yeah. That was I saw really that in creepy, Peoria, man. Illinois, with uh, this comic, Pete Holmes. We walk in, I swear to God, we saw like a, the 2 o'clock show on like a fucking Wednesday. We were the only two people in there, <laughs> and both of us are trying to act like we're not freaked out by this. The first time when that girl was in the closet, yeah. and her head comes over and her jaw drops. Oh, I like, man. Ah. I saw her face. Uh, ah! I couldn't take. Plus, I also think women being the 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 murderer is, is way more scary. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, that was and that whole weird video that they played with the woman in the mirror brushing her hair. Just that shit alone creeps me out. Oh, so much I can't. Ugh. Going down in the well in that fucking water, I, I can't tell. Yeah, yeah, creepy. Hey, <laughs> all take... the instant messages, are, this guy's a pussy. Oh, of course, yeah, real real men on the instant feedback. Hey, pussy, pussy, shut up, I'm scared. Let's take another call <laughs> and then we'll move on to other things. Gary, what's up? Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey. Uh, actually, I go to the University of Tennessee and uh, I was actually able to go to the body farm. You went to uh, one of these body farms? It a, yes, it was amazing. Uh, <laughs> Good time? <I> <laughs> The one in Knoxville, Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, it, it was pretty wild. There's probably 30 to 40 bodies in different stages of decomposition. It was uh, very amazing. Wow. Thanks, guys. Um, sir? Gary? Sir? Yes? Your your call stinks. Is your brain right, decomposing guys. in front of our eyes? Like it, Like you're like losing your mind here. Are yeah, you, it's, okay. it's like you've are been you to some place unbelievably interesting, and you're not giving us any details. You're just going, we went there. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. So oh, what man. happened? Ah, it was wild. Walking on campus, sorry. If we had a whole show of callers like this, we would have no audience. You understand <laughs> that, right? Yeah. All right. He's probably just a little nervous. Uh, someone has some feedback here. <laughs> he goes, yes, yeah, I understand. I suck. That's like I just like dealing with dead bodies. They don't right. hurt me the way you guys just. Did. I could finally relate to your show, so I figured I'd better call. Call. Yeah, I think better thanks. of us. Uh, Ant, the creepiest trailer ever, and I agree with this. This was really bad. Was the girl from The Exorcist crawling down the stairs backwards on her hands and feet? Remember, she was doing kind of a crab uh, upside down crab walk, but her head was turned the other way uh, and. Like, any time a body gets distorted like that, I can't watch it. Creeps me out. <laughs> the... And this is the, the caller describing that. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> it's real scary. Get us out of here, Derek. That's that a good one, Andy. Read that uh, one. 42nd Street, Matt. Hey, guys, when I was seven years old, uh, my older cousin told my mom they were taking me to see Tron. Remember the movie Tron? Uh, instead, I was treated to a viewing of Poltergeist. Holy shit, I'm fucking seven years old. I lost it when the guy tore his face off. Nightmares for weeks. Absolutely. That movie, uh, for the time, now it's a little dated. You watch it, you're like, man, eh, yeah, looks a little I cheesy. I don't know, man. That midget lady's still creepy as shit. This house is clean. <laughs> she is creepy. Walk toward the light. I told you that story, though. When I was a kid, my parents decided to take uh, me 
uh, I guess they didn't want to spring for a babysitter that night, took me to uh, see Bonnie and Clyde. Now, I was... It's not a scary movie. I'm a little kid. This is like 1969 or something. I was a little tot. What were you laughing? Well, because you know Groucho, so 1969. I don't know Groucho. I by, met Groucho. By, by 1969, you had to be at least 17. In my early 20s. <laughs> I was a tiny kid. Bill, you're talking to a guy that met Groucho Marx. I met Groucho. Oh, my God. In- <laughs> exactly. I we don't know Groucho. how old he is. Oh, my God. We're starting to think he's a vampire or something. I met Groucho in 1975. He was pretty much on his he's deathbed. A- no, he was working out at fucking Gold's Gym. <laughs> <laughs> the, the original. Right. It was on the road. <laughs> Me and Groucho. We found out the other day that if Groucho was alive, he'd be like 108 or something. <laughs> and Anthony I- met him. He was an old man. He was. He died like he really. ran track with him in high school. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bonnie and Clyde, oh, nineteen sixty nine. Sure. Yeah, took me to see Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah, and uh, I I vomited all over the uh, inside of the car. It was at a drive-in, and I vomited all over the place. What are they pointing at? Jesus, there's something going on. Oh, Maury, yeah, I know. I... <laughs> Maury, we're only getting this out of one. Uh, doctor told, told uh, Tarja her daughter would never be able to walk or talk and she'd be a vegetable. Tashana. So Tashana. That's good. On I got it, I got it. Whatever you did, just don't touch it. Dancing else. and singing and something's wrong with her, though. Well, I should be dead, but I'm a miracle survivor is the title of today's show. We just had Maury on the other day. Yes. How about that? I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, Thank this you is great. So much. And I just want to tell you, no matter what nobody say, keep your head up and keep God first. You don't need anybody but your mother and your family. Does she have to and say God keep your head up? Oh, you head is twice you the size of a normal one. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, sure. We can hang out. I'll come right. and see you. And we have a yeah. special prize. Yeah. Oh, a special surprise, Maury. We have, <laughs> we is have a, a special creep. surprise for, uh, I for love Tashana and her mom. Yes. What's the surprise? Tonight is girls' night out. We're going to eat at Mango's. Right. We're going to go hang out at Don't a little spot. Cancel my reservation at Mango's. How's that? It's, it's girls' no, night no, out no. tonight. You going to hang out, girl? Okay. Can you tell me all about it when you get back? <laughs> okay, my dear. Thank you so much. All right. Well, thank you so no, much. Thank By you. By the way, Tweet's new CD is in the stores. It's called It's Me Again. So we want to thank you, Tashana. We want to thank your mom. You think Maury is thinking about us right now? Of course. <laughs> Look at this. All right. Show. We'll Get her off. Right after next this. freak. Bring in the next freak. Let's see what the, the next freak is. in a life and death struggle with Mother Nature. The destruction was just happening so fast. I knew uh-huh. me and my family were going to die if we didn't get out of there. I was so scared. And I thought we were going to die. She was shot point blank in the mouth. Uh-oh. Oh. And lost <laughs> half of her face. Oh, jeez. What happened to your baby? Rabbit cheese. There she was, Bella of the Ball, at her very own Princess birthday party. <laughs> want more, Mari? Get the inside. Oh, I don't want to see that. <laughs> no. We had Mari in the other day. We really hit it off. It turns out he's a big fan of the show, listens all the time. Yeah, Mari's probably listening right now. <laughs> Mari, uh, has, <laughs> Mari. <laughs> he is truly the new P.T. Barnum. He ju- It's just a, it's a freak show. If he's not doing freaks, he's doing the paternity test. Yeah. That's what he does. But it, he brings people on. Like the one subject he has is, I, I, I'm, I'm a person, don't stare at me, is like one of the subjects. And then he parades people on to have he's more people at look at them than will ever see them in a lifetime. <laughs> uh, you're a special little girl. You're, you know something? You're beautiful inside. And then he uh, brings out a singer that is desperate for the publicity. Right, the publicity. <laughs> Her new album's available. Like I know, that was really bad. <laughs> Mario, At the I, bodega I, on 155th Street. <laughs> like, it's nobody's, you know? I'll sing to that walking piece of chop meat, Mario, but I want to plug. <laughs> right, I'll do whatever you say as long as you plug my CD and when it's dropping. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> they go way down the ladder to find these people. she's going to blow that girl off at the after party. Of course. Oh, and Mangoes? Hey, They're going to Mangoes. Hey, remember me? <laughs> She'll probably just stop in, say hi. Quick Is photo. everything good? Is your dinner okay? All right, I got to run. That's it. Yeah. Just leaves her there with a mother and a bunch of horrified uh, customers. customers. we got to say to, uh, hi to an old friend. 
Jeff Norris, everybody. Hello there. How are you? Remember Jeff Norris? Everybody? Of course, Jeff. How you been? How you doing, buddy? Goody, good. good. You do realize we've been... What's up, man? How are Jeff you? used to be on our uh, old show all the time when we were doing commercial radio, and uh, you do realize we've been back for almost a year, right? Longer than that. I haven't seen you in about three, two, three years. Jeff's claim to fame is his. he was our first guest ever on our show at NEW. How about that? We had to start somewhere. <laughs> I was going to say, it got me a lot of success. I'm still spackling in the daytime. And uh, he was the voice of the frosted mini-wheat on the mini-wheats commercial. F I eat Cheerios now. Fuck them. All oh, they do is talk no. about the fiber. They got all old people and fiber. And now it's not about the, the, characters, the so. frosted side. No, Wait, you don't like them anymore? No. Oh, I'm out of work. I'm unemployed. Oh, no. But they gave you a good living for a while. No, I mean, I think you just fucked yourself out of any sort of reunion. That's okay. Yeah. Here, do your Sometimes they bring it back. Can you, you do know? the voice at least so people around America go, oh, that guy. It's a frosted pesci. Yeah. That's all it is. I'm sweet and delicious. You're healthy and nutritious. If we work together in harmony, we realize we're actually a pretty good team. <laughs> That's him. That's the mini we. You got a frosted side, too? I closed my eyes, man. That, yeah, here he is. Mini wow, holy now shit. Now he's like, fuck that cereal. No, I don't know. Now I if eat cereal. You're listening to uh, Tony the Tiger's a prick. <laughs> <laughs> I went out for Tony the to Tiger, for... too. Fuck you Boris did. Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. The mini wheat can't eat my shit. <laughs> that motherfucker. Oh, man. Did you get well, a lot of free mini wheats uh, from doing that? Not a, not a box. Not one not box. Not one box. They didn't mail you one lousy not box. Not one box. They give you a little something, no? My mother bought me one when I got the deal. That was it. My mother. My crap. mother. Did you ever try to get, like, free mini wheats from uh, the supermarket or something? No. I do that as a gag, you know, every once in a while when we're in a magazine. I try to get the magazine for free. I go, hey. You just want to show the person behind the counter you're go, in it. Hey, if you're in the magazine, do you get it for free? And they laugh like, oh, yeah, so it's hard so. to prove. And then I, no, then I show them and still got to pay. Yeah. <laughs> With the mini wheat box. I usually, uh, when we're, I remember flying a few times and having uh, us have a, a big article in one of the magazines. And I sit there in first class. As everyone's walking through, and I'll open up to my picture and tilt a little to the <laughs> aisle and drink my my Bloody Mary. <laughs> <laughs> like this is why I'm up here, getting the back and row. <laughs> oh, this is a good question. You got to take it where you can, Bill. Let's go to Keith in uh, New York. Keith. Uh, uh, Keith and Pete, Danny's a moron, but yeah. either way. All right, I'm sorry, bro. No, that's all right. I want to know if the uh, Frosted Mini Wheat guy knows the Angry Baby. Yeah. <laughs> Bob Kelly's doing. Uh, yeah. The angry baby. Yeah, Did you hear that yesterday? Any week, guy. Bob Kelly. Bob. He he what? He wants to what? No, he's doing a character called Angry Baby now. For oh. voiceover work, and for it sounds exactly like your frosted mini. Does it? <laughs> yeah. We did a whole thing yesterday on the show. Great. A whole thing. So what have you been up to, Jeff? I'm just spackling in a day. You're really I should spackling. not admit that. No, I bought a house, so I'm fixing it up. Oh, there you go. But uh, performing, doing a lot in Vegas, doing a lot around here. Vegas? Yeah. What are you doing there? The Tropicana. You got a Vegas gig? Yeah, five times a year I'm out there. So. And uh, are you encouraged? Bob Kephart? Yeah, it's still Bob, but he has like, uh, he's doing some different stuff. Like he'll bring guys back on a regular, and it's nice because it's just a two-man show rather than a three. So. so are you supposed to also bring your other friends in show business and uh, encourage them to perhaps perform at this club? Well, no, I, I don't give a shit. Nobody help me. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I ain't helping anybody. <laughs> I performed out there about eight years ago. It was one of my first headlining gigs, and yeah. I was bombing so bad, yeah. they actually bumped me down to the middle act, and they made Ooh. the middle act close. <laughs> Holy it's shit. not an easy yeah. room. People get... Uh, it yeah, seems it like was... people that aren't there just to see comedy. No, right? no. I mean, it's a good gig. I, I like it, but... Yeah? Yeah, it's good. How big a room? About 400. 400? Yeah. Like gamblers and people that yeah. don't want to go people see... People are all pissed I... off. They just lost their know. mortgage on a slot. That's like... Eesh. Walk in there, yeah. They they're not. When you go to a comedy club, people have gone down there to see a comedian. Yeah. This it's like, oh, we got tickets. So we were something. Yeah, this. it's I'm like the first at the three hotel. days. I... They have locals night. <laughs> but oh. the weekends are good. Thursday through Sunday's night. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anybody in there is taking a break from losing. Right. Right. Because if you're winning, you're, you're still going to be out there. And, and most you, of you, the people that are in there want to be out gambling. Right. They're taking a break, but they're like, eh, I can be at the table right now. And if you go a minute over, they fly you home. Because they want people back in the casino losing yeah, more money. Of course. It's crazy. Yeah. It's not too bad. I'll, that sounds I'll like uh, you're doing all right. I'm doing all right. Let's go to Ken in Jersey. Ken, what's up? Hey. I want to say hello to Jeff. Hey, Jeff, I don't know if you remember me. We were playing, you were doing Rascals in Ocean Township one night, and um, 
forget who the other comic was, but somebody was heckling. Remember you and I got into the fight with a bunch of assholes? Oh, my God. What you happened? Remember that? That was with Greg Morton. Greg Morton. Yeah, 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 I remember. Oh, my. Yep. I got to tell you the story remember, real quick. You got, you got cut, and remember the bartender got hit over the head with the bottle? Yeah, that was crazy. This is at a comedy club? This was at Rascals in Ocean Township. Yeah, buddy. Man, remember you and I took the took the guys outside, beat the shit out of them out in the park a lot. They ran. Yeah, well, I'm still paying that fine. Um, no, <laughs> do you uh, do you know Greg Morton, Bill? Have you ever heard of Greg Morton? Uh, no. He's he's a black guy from Canada. He's 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 really good. I mean, he's great impressionist, great comedian, and he's a light skinned black guy. So there was some people there, and he does a joke saying that when he was a kid, his mother nearly beat the black off of him. Oh. And and, and he says it's dear near worked. I grew up beige, you know. Some guy in the audience goes, yeah, but you're still an N. Like, screams it out. Wow. And next thing you know, the bouncer comes over. He hits the bouncer in the head with his Jack Daniels glass. And this big fight breaks out. So I went over to help the guy. There was three guys. Going, Anytime there's a fight, you can was, always depend I, on uh, I, I, Jeff I, I, I mean, in. the bouncer was getting, like, hit in the face with a Jack Daniels glass. It was terrible. Split him wide open, kicking him. And Ken, he didn't. I remember you. Nars is an animal, by the way. No, I'm not. Have you you are an yet? animal. No, I'm not a bad Look guy. Look at you. You buried, buried him in a, a fire plug. plug. It's the shirt. It's your shirt? I behave. And I'm not you, a bad guy. You, remember just... when Jeff ruined my vacation? What did he do? Oh, <laughs> a chokehold. Yeah. Yeah, but you asked me. He, he goes, I, teach me a chokehold. I did not. You were demonstrating what you did to some guy after you brought him out of uh, Caroline's. Remember the guy that was oh, well, biting my ankle? That's why I defended you. What? Some guy. You were there. Some guy went over and said that you two sucked or something. Some guy was. No, you know what? He was trying to come off like a fan. He was like, I love the show. Dude, you're great. And then he like bows down. is like, oh, you're fantastic. And then he starts biting. He tried to bite my yeah. ankle. <laughs> he like was like, I Caroline's drunk off his ass. So <laughs> Narcissus comes over, like picks the guy up and uh, es go escorts him out of the club. Which is fine, you know. I was laughing my ass off. I thought it was great. Uh, then I go upstairs after the gig, and Norris is upstairs, and I go, "What'd you do to that guy after he you got him upstairs?" He goes, "That ah, choked him out." I was like, "Get the <laughs> fuck out of here!" He goes, "No, really." And then he demonstrates on me what he did, and I hate when people that are real good at martial you arts. You said, anything, "Show me." No, I didn't mean show me. I know me. Anthony. He wouldn't have said show me because I can't stand did, when people that show me fight somebody else. or do martial arts actually go. So, all right, stand there. I'll show you. Like, let me grab your arm, and I want no part of that. No part. Those of it. holds that just just. So he goes. To the point I grabbed him cry. like this, and then he puts his, the crook of his arm around my throat and squeezes. Now, for Norris, it's like nothing. To him, he barely even moved. To me, it's a death hold. <laughs> he, like, did something where I had a sore throat and couldn't talk for a week. It was right before I was on vacation. I was on, I'm on vacation like, yeah, I'll take another banana daiquiri, please. <laughs> crushed I Adam's couldn't talk. Apple. I had a crushed windpipe or something. <laughs> and, and he almost choked me out with a split-second little crook of his arm, just dink, little thing, That's and all no blood to my head. Oh, okay. Unbelievable. Two, two pounds of pressure. That's, That's all it. you need. That's Break all you need. You can make me sound like such a thug. Just a couple of foot pounds per second per second. <laughs> <laughs> I love the little son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, wow. Sorry I couldn't get here on time, man. Try, I, I, coming here was crazy. I got up at 5.30 this morning to be here at 9.15. Yeah. They and it took there. like four and a half hours from New Jersey to get here. I'm not even kidding you. High security out there. Well, no, not that. The park, the park, Garden State Parkway and the Turnpike mm -hmm. and then coming through the tunnel. You like the new joint? It's crazy. It's yeah, kinda, it's very nice. It's kind of weird, right? It's in a good way. In a good way. No, in more, a great way. We built this It seems thing. more, that's what I'm saying. It seems more personal. We designed then. the whole uh, studio yeah, and everything. Yeah, cool. And you see all those cubicles? They were supposed to be gone four months ago. We gave up on that. But supposedly they're giving us this whole space. No, it looks cool, man. And we're going to have like a stage and stuff and a pole for girls. And... <laughs> Very nice. Oh, it's going to be hooked up. It's going to be hooked up. But Very that nice. was supposed to happen already. Remember, Anthony? Mm -hmm. These guys were supposed to be out of here already. Yeah. As they're staring at me over the cubicles. What are they doing? They work, they work for you? They work. Ah, they're, they're they work like. For you. Um, ah, they're. Every company needs dead weight, I guess, so they're just kind of, <laughs> you know, they just kind of do, uh, we don't know what they do. They just stare at computers and, and think about what 20 songs they want to play, you know, just stupid stuff. <laughs> so Earl. Yeah, Earl is now producing yeah. uh, Ron and Fez. So Earl. Oh, wow. He's the executive producer of Ron and Fez. That's pretty good. So, all right. We should move on to other things here. Out of business. Well, we got, uh, we got audio from uh, Danny Bonaducci's new show. Have you seen this thing yet, No. Bill? Psycho. I hear it's a clusterfuck. Although Anthony's making me sound like him now. No. 
No, not at all. A, you're just but, a fight animal. I really am not. I really walk away. I really do. This show has potential. A lot of these reality shows, it's 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 getting old, but uh, the celebrity reality shows are really starting to take off, and some of them are really good. The Hulk yeah. Hogan one stinks. Uh, that's awful because it's all fake and staged. The like surreal wrestling. life, surreal life is really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got that new show with uh, the Brady kid there. Yeah, coming yeah. off on the surreal Peter life. Peter Brady and his girlfriend. Right. He's like in his 40s, and she's a 20-something. And 20, uh, she was the next so top hot. model or something. 22 yeah. or something like that. Yeah, Ridiculously 22. Hot. And they're, uh, they hooked up, so they decided uh, to make a show out of it. A little anytime, anytime there's a speck of interest in one of these reality shows, like any little highlight, they spin it off and make uh, its, Strange own, love. its own show. Yeah, same thing. That was like, oh, joke. that was entertaining. Now, when you take it in the context of the show, it's entertaining. It doesn't mean it could stand alone, you know, by itself and be entertaining. And it wasn't. That whole th- thing it's like was like when they tried to give the Ropers their own show. Yeah, that did not work. Or Flow <laughs> off of Alice. It's like people barely Flo. watched Alice. Yeah. And they hook up Flow. <laughs> they go, well, we'll just have you say, kiss my grits Ma'am? every episode. Kiss my grits. <laughs> kiss my grits. Oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Danny Bonaducci show, I gotta tell you, it's, it's, it has potential. Yeah. Later on in the, in the series, I guess he tries to kill himself. It gets so nut, bad. Man. The show starts with him. for the finale. Him and his wife that he cheats on all the time. He's an alcoholic. He does steroids, all this shit. Sex addict is what he says. Every Sex clip addict. I see, he's just Who screaming it? at somebody. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's got like, just, uh. I'm <laughs> out of my fucking mind. He's got roid rage and all that. And, uh, and he's got a kid in the business. So he's, uh, driving her to auditions and stuff. He's got but a I guess, kid in the business? Yeah. I guess the show got. What? Really? How old? Uh, I want to say 11, maybe. Isn't that how oh, he got cruel. fucked up? Yeah. That's what I was just going to say. That's is, cruel. Is that that kid that he brought to that... Remember the when we were out in L.A.? When we first started at AAF? Right. And he had a store? baby in a stroller? Oh, wow, yeah. Jesus. When we met him out there, yeah. That time, do march on. <laughs> um, wow. Well, she's now in the business, and he's going to prove that you could be in the business as a child actor and have a normal life. That ah! One of the angles that the show's taken... Well, the show's getting uh, or got so out of control, they took the kids right out of it. They told the kids, you know, that live with somebody else or we're not continuing with this show. Because mm-hmm. the shit that was going on, the, the, I guess VH1 or whoever filmed it just couldn't do so it. So it's anymore. pretty real then. It seems pretty yeah, real. Yeah, it's, it's like his whole life is falling apart right on the screen. But I guess he's all right because he'll be on our show very soon. So I guess he survived the whole thing. <laughs> the name is weird though. It's called Breaking Bonaduce. Breaking Bonaduce. It's almost like they're implying like VH1 was leaving the drugs around. Like let's fucking break yeah. this guy. Let's get him. Yeah. I know we can put him over the edge. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I, we're in the business. We had Harry Reams in yesterday. He's clean and sober for 16 years. We were and trying. We fake. We fake applause for the guy, but in our minds, we're like, "How can we break him? <laughs> How can we break <laughs> oh, him?" Oh, I saw you do that with Bernie Getz. <laughs> right? Yeah. Same thing. Bernie, we wanted Bernie to snap. You just try to Hope figure out how to break to these people. And uh, Harry Reams, we showed him the first live chick's pussy that he's seen since he was married, <laughs> like 16 years. And and he went, and he went right into character. Oh, he was like, yeah. All of a sudden, he started mumbling under his voice. He was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's nice. Ooh, yeah. Huh. Making noises he hadn't made since he was doing <laughs> porno. Loved it. He's <laughs> he's barely hanging in there. You can see it in his eyes. Just nail scraping. <laughs> yeah. I got to hold on. He's 16 on. years. I'm a successful God, real estate agent. been here yesterday? Oh, it was key. He was telling great stories. Good he, one. He told a story where he doesn't remember from, I think it was 85 to 89. He swears he just doesn't remember four years of his well, life. Well, that one thing episode he talks about, he was uh, staying in a hotel and uh, or at a hospital rehab. He was trying to go through with some, some kind of rehab. They put him in a hospital here in New York City. Um, they would give him quarters for the telephone every day. Well, he would stock away these quarters, and then when he had enough, he went out and bought some booze with it. Uh, he got hammered, just bought, bought like a half a gallon of vodka, drinks that down. He wakes up four days later in the Los Angeles County Jail, 3,000 wow. miles away in jail, still to this day has no clue how he got from New York to L.A. and ended up in jail. How do you go that far Hey, you can't be that fucked up and get on a plane. Yeah, on a plane, driving, yeah. hitching. You have to function. You have to be able to move locomotion. <laughs> yeah, there, but that is fucked up. That is hammered. That really is. <laughs> oh, oh, Maury. Yes. <laughs> Jesus, Maury. Just. Six months pregnant. You were six months pregnant when you were shot. 
What happened to your baby? She's doing fine. She's doing fine. All right. Yeah. Thank God. This is the one uh, that was shot point shot blank in the, in the face. face. Shot oh. in the face with a yeah. shotgun Somehow by her. She's got a pelican chin. How much do you Tell want? Tell it to her. Oh, you are the worst. Hold on. Well, you gotta make the you gotta I'll pick the pictures for the uh, the Ball audience, eh? Pelican. If I end up got two health oh. passes that day. Oh my God! Wow! Um, Shark attack. But I don't die. Oh, there's a person who saved your life, wasn't there? This shooting happened like one, two. No, I nursed myself morning. back to you fucking hell. Tongue is brutal. You know, the tongue is hanging out of her mouth. Like the door. It's, yes. it's not bad enough to do a dramatization of her being shot in the face. Yeah. You see that with the black and white. <laughs> yeah. And it's Reverend like a bulldog. Ever see like a bulldog with his tongue just won't go in? Yeah, yeah. It's all dried out. That's a mastiff. And there are lots of That's pieces of this puzzle that we want to just Sounds like Ben on mic. Put together so we have an entire puzzle all done when it's over. And the and the first big piece we got to bring out is it's your daughter. Your right? chin. Oh, uh -huh. more oh, more Yeah. You. Listen to Maury. Look at you. <laughs> Hi, Mohanas. Oh, Mohanas. Mohanas, who is that? My grandma. <laughs> that your, who's that? Grandma. Is that your grandma? Jesus. She's 25. <laughs> Grandma's 25 years old. <laughs> Holy crap. Are you kidding me? Who helped save your mom's life. That's great, great grandma. <laughs> her prom's tonight. <laughs> that is horrific. Tonight is her 30th birthday. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, jeez. All right. So, uh, mess. Breaking Bonaduce. You want to hear some audio from this thing? Sure. It's pretty good. Danny had an affair not too long ago, and I've been trying to deal with the damage of that. Looking back on it now, I should have seen it happening, but, you know, at the time, I really didn't realize that it was happening. I actually told you it was happening. No, you didn't. I gave you a pretty clear heads up. Okay. Do you remember this conversation? Honey, I know you don't like sex. Somebody better start having some sex with me soon. So the reason that you had the affair was because you weren't having sex? You know what? I think you've got it. It's slipped down the direction. I have to get this in because it's, I think, really relevant. When he was having the affair, he was getting the relationship that he deserved. No, we were not having sex because he was having sex somewhere else. He wasn't getting any sex from me, and why should he have? Right? Having that affair meant when you were withholding sex from him that he was... No, well, this woman had no mercy for me and my children, none. You should see these letters that she's written him. They're all like, oh, you're my husband, and, you know, like, me and the kids didn't even exist. Gretchen, I got to tell you, I mean, that freaks me out. It freaks me out. That's so, like, over the edge. I, mm. I'm trying to understand... How that happens? Where? How did that happen? I don't care about sex that much. I mean, I don't. I just feel like I'm more evolved and I have better things to do. He is a sex addict, <sighs> totally. Do you think you're a sex addict? Yeah. Holy crap. So what the wife ain't giving him sex, but he's getting it somewhere else, and that's why the wife says she wasn't giving him sex. She's not right. in, she openly admits she's not interested in sex. What do you do in that situation? I think I'm a higher evolved person. Yeah. What does that mean? We all need sex. My God, man. Uh, Watson <laughs> from Allentown. I just saw the black Jay Leno on Maury. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. <laughs> that is terrible. <laughs> so she's pissed off that he's having an affair, but she's not giving it to him. What happened first, though? Did she stop giving him sex, and that's what caused him to go she out? She said she doesn't like having sex. Hmm. I gotta side with Danny on this one. Yeah. Point to uh, Danny. Yeah. Point yeah. to Danny. One point to Danny. All right. My career is my thing. I'll work day and night for it. I'll do anything for it. And I do that for my family. Like I said, I used to live right behind Grandma's Chinese by the dumpster, and uh, I won't have that happen again. And I talked about us being in counseling for for a very long time now on the radio, but I never specifically talked about an affair. And I thought, here's an act of contrition. Gretchen will understand. I'm gonna put my career on the line right now. Hello? Honey, I'm going to have to turn down your radio. Yeah? Apparently he's what a great guy. He's going to tell her live on his radio live show. Live on the show. That he's having a, an affair. Holy crap. He did that? The guy's just yeah. desperate for fame. He really is. Yeah? Apparently you've been listening. Yep. Sorry. I know this is an inappropriate time, but I didn't know. Well, how are you? Uh, I'm, I'm not good. 
You know, I mean, I never thought that I'd be in the situation in the first place. And secondly, I never thought that I would stand for it, you know. But once you have kids, you can't be selfish, you know. Sometimes you have to put them first. And, you know, that's what I did. What a wonderful guy. Yeah. Do it, do it on the air. Do it on the air and try to fit it in before you have to play your commercials. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jesus. We'll be back. <laughs> we'll be back. So he told his, uh, yeah, his wife that. He was having an affair live on his uh, radio show. Mm. What do you think of that, Bill? Sort of a uh, break of the trust between the... <laughs> you think? Just yeah. a bit. I mean, I mean, is she in on it, though? I don't you think. never know what this Hollywood Could crap. be an act, right? That's what yeah. I'm thinking, too. I'm thinking, oh, well, she's crying. And then I'm thinking, of course she's crying. Yeah, they can Probably do that. an open relationship. She was in yeah. on the threesome. Let's go to... <laughs> right. Let's go to Kung Fu yeah, from Wax Bag. Weeping on the phone. Actress. All right. Your voice is quiet. No, I haven't had sex in over four and a half years. Five years in December. No surprise with a name like Kung Fu. Hey, no, Kung no, 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 no. Hey, Kung Fu. Hey, Kung Fu. Bang that's me just harder. His, that's, just, just, that's just his street name. What's the problem? Yeah, why <laughs> haven't you had sex in four years, nine months, Kung Fu? Women or whores? Well, that I, doesn't make well, sense. Well, no, no, no. My ex would fuck the world is what it came down to. And I don't want diseases, the emotional baggage, all that other crap. I've never felt so free in my life. But but what about the sex? I have it every day, sometimes three times. With what your cat? Yeah. With myself. That's better Not, than a woman. So you're just a self-sustained is, unit right now. <laughs> masturbation is the key to freedom. Will you ever have sex again? Yeah, I'm working on a 21-year-old right now, but, you know, she's a slut, and her cousin's trying to hook me up with her, so he has a it might work out. I don't know. My friends women. think I'm gay. I'm not gay. Shaggy, I'm not a queer. That's all i got to say. <laughs> Jesus. Shaggy, Shaggy and Kung Fu. You guys have been dating for five years. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. No one was even going in that direction. I know. Going in like, yeah, I'm not gay. I think you're, you know little, I think you're a little worried about that, Kung yeah. fu -y. Well, yeah, all 1K plan, and I'm not gay. <laughs> right. How do you get the name Kung Fu? -y? It's my first gamer tag I ever had, like years ago, so I stuck with it. But why? Did you, did you kick somebody in the head? What? No, 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 no. Uh, mm. Just it just came to my mind when I was hooking up DSL about ten years ago, and that's about it. All right. Oh, no good. Nothing exciting. Oh, Later. Jesus Christ, Maury. Thank you, Kung Fu. -y. He, oh uh, my God! Don't even look. <laughs> Burned. Man to the law. Shot. And run over. It's like a slee stack. <laughs> Remember that shit? <laughs> you know how brave you are? You know how courageous you are? Yeah, yeah. So we yeah. all yeah. yeah. on that, show. that was it. And oh, we, my God. It's an update. Uh, it's an update. Slee stacks. All right. Uh, let's move on with the uh, breaking bond. Oh, they gave her a plastic nose. Ah, <laughs> That's nice. They'll snap on noses. From the, from the Michael her. Jackson collection. <laughs> Those snap on noses look really uh, real. The slee stack. Wow. Remember that? All right, here we go. More Breaking Bonaducci. Oh. Do you have kids? you have kids? We have two children. We have two. What are you teaching them? You know what? I noticed even with my daughter. This is why you're in therapy. It's because of those kids. You're just squinting your eyes at me. What do your eyes want to say? That it would be, I would, I would walk a very careful line with my children. You're telling me to watch my step? Yes, I am. All right. I'm going to watch my step. Thank but you. I'm going to tell you the same thing back. I want you to watch your step with your children. Because if there's one thing that's sacred to me, it's how parents treat their children and what they teach their children by modeling and their behavior. You can bang out all the cliches you wish if it'll make my wife feel better. Cross the line with my children and we'll have difficulties. Okay. Oh, what? Man, you don't want to mess with this guy. Crossing what line? What did he do? He's talking about his children, that's yeah. all. Talking. Talking about isn't his he, children. Isn't this a therapy session? He's, yeah. He's that's on, he's that, that's not a real like, therapist. No. The second you go on fucking TV, that's like You're Dr. Phil. Yeah, right, right. You're like me. you got the same problem. Hmm. You, you know, he's trying to get laid. Yeah. Yeah, he wants to be in show business. Yeah. That's it. It's a scam. All right, more he's general. very unlikable. Oh, I'm guessing that you get by now, I'm not my biggest fan. Do you get that by now? Yes. Okay, good. And you know what else I'm guessing? I'm guessing that you really are a good father. And I want you to tell you. me how you're a good father. That's what I can't get. That's because what I want to know. You know how tell I'm me a good what father? Life is like I teach home. them not to be like me. Are you happy? I teach them the lines bad. I teach them the cheating's bad. I teach them all the things I don't know. I didn't do a thing. I did not do a lot right. I'm 45 years old. 
and I didn't do a lot right. Oh boy. And it's not that my kids are off limits. I just taught them to be better than I. They know better in a way because I've been deceitful. I don't tell them I know this from experience. I don't tell them I know this because I am soulless. Acting. Yeah, he's not a very good actor at all. He's an addict. Yeah. They will be better than I for not knowing me. Dun, dun. Yeah, yeah, come on. I can't stand addicts. They fucking make everything about themselves. Like, you're actually feeling bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm a piece of shit. And they wait. No, no, you're not a piece of shit. <laughs> you're, you're, no, I am. I am. Fuck you. You are a piece of shit. You're exactly right. And you get no sympathy. <laughs> I, love, I love that. Very yeah. unlikable. What's great about these celebrity reality shows, they'll do just about anything to keep their fame going. So yeah. These shows are going to just get better and better and better. And now, the, yeah, you got to top this guy now. Yeah, you got to top this guy. You the know? guy's n- known for what he did when he was 11, 12, 13 years old. And now he's 45 and trying to uh, rekindle things. I mean, of I like him. I think he's funny. I saw him on Politically Incorrect one time and they had like all child stars. Really? And he was the only guy who was like really being open. Honest, like, yeah, it sucks. Bring, I wish I never did the show, blah, 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 all that stuff. And then, like, Gary Coleman's trying to play it off. Like, when people are going, like, you know, saying, what you talking about, uh, Willis? Yeah. He tries to, you know, thinks if he ignores it, people are going to forget that he's on that fucking sitcom that's still airing today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. Just give into it. Go to the mall, make an appearance, sign some headshots. Yeah, what what is it about this uh, being a, a, a star when you're a child that just fucks him up so bad? Because uh, that's all they're known for. I mean, you don't want to, you don't want people to think about you as being 12 your whole life. Just imagine <laughs> what you were doing at 12, and that's all they know. Other people are able to move on. Yeah, right. but when you're famous, it's like if if you fuck up your life, okay, and you're anonymous, the only thing you got to worry about is some guy you went to high school with, <laughs> maybe walking in when you're flipping burgers at TGI Fridays. But if you're famous, everybody went to high school with you. Just yeah, like, who the right, fuck right. He, he's making burgers? <laughs> what a loser! Oh my god! And then they're on their cell phone. Dude, you remember that? Was it one day at a time, right? Remember the guy who played the janitor? Dude, he's making me a burger right fucking now. Uh, Steve, uh, no, Schneider! <laughs> fucking Schneider! <laughs> This is <laughs> fucking, I mean, every fucking right. day, and you just, you, what do you do? Oh, wow. You just can't leave it. It's it's fucking right. horrendous. Your life freezes at a certain age, and that's it. And everybody. If you were in a sitcom, uh, that's it. I, I, you know, I had. The, that is brutal when you put it that way yeah. there, Bill. <laughs> that's why they, they shave their head, they get tattoos, they try to do everything. Yeah, right, to right. Look fucking, completely different. And when you got that courtship of Eddie Father's face where you're 60 and you still look like you're eight running down a beach, you're <laughs> fucked. Funny. You're trying to be edgy and be a peep, but let yeah. me tell you about. They always uh, start up like a punk band. Yeah, they, they get do piercings. Yeah, they do heroin. <laughs> they wouldn't have done that. <laughs> no, no. They got to get they totally on Alice. opposite end of the spectrum. <laughs> Alice. Oh God, did that kid look horrendous? He turned. <laughs> he got yeah, older. Yeah. yeah. Oh, his head just kept getting long, longer and longer. <laughs> that John Kerry. T- Disease with Tom Petty teeth. <laughs> he probably got more ass when he was 13 than when he was 17. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, we used to, you know, hang with Barry Williams, did the show a lot. He would get so pissed if you called him Greg Brady. He's just had it. Oh. Absolutely had it with that, you know? And we yeah. would hang after the show wherever he went. He was still Greg Brady. What was that show where they pushed him into the pool? It was just a oh, final um, nail. Surreal Life? Was it on Surreal Life or one of those? Yeah, and he just gave into it. He was just like, yeah. I think he, at that moment, he's like, well. Well, Greg Brady there, uh, Barry Williams did the, the celebrity boxing. Celebrity boxing. Didn't yeah. he fight Danny Bonaduce? Yeah. He got hammered. He got his he? ass kicked. <laughs> Danny's like a martial arts guy. And what Barry Williams, what does he know about fighting? <laughs> My lawyer was one of the guys in... Uh, what is that? F- uh, the Goonies. Oh, wait, that's your lawyer too? <laughs> Chunk? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, who the hell was talking about that? I don't know. I don't remember this He's one. He's fucking great. You know what I love was about it Bob? Bob? Yeah. Yeah. Bob, Bob Kelly? Kelly? Yeah. Oh, okay. You know what Same I love guy. about that shit is like he, he just fucking walked away. He actually went to law school. 
Took yeah, his wow. shit, did all that. Now he's out. He's out. He's a yeah. lawyer. He's fucking great at it. Has he got pictures in his office of him as Well, I've chunk? never seen the movie, so it doesn't freak me <laughs> out. You saw the movie? Yeah, my girl was just like, dude, that's Chunk. Because <laughs> I guess he... Dude, that's Chunk. That's chunk. Do you know who's representing <laughs> you? Chunk. All right, we got more audio from Breaking Bonaducci. Do, do you know what all my friends would call going to Las Vegas without your wife? That's a hall pass. Nobody takes their own wife to Vegas. I'm begging you to come to Vegas. You should be flattered. See what I mean? I just would be a grateful and much more comfortable if you would come with me. I just don't feel like I need to be babysitting you. Good answer. I'm afraid I, I won't she deliver. I'm, fr I'm afraid. This marriage is He's so scared. over. What are you guys doing? One no, of them, I respect that. Fuck you. I have to go with I mean. you so you don't cheat on me? Yeah. If it's real, one of them will be dead in a week. If one of them will kill the other one. The marriage is so over, though. I mean, what, are they staying together for the kid or the kids? That was a good soundtrack, though. Yeah, the it's dramatic sad music. music, right? Yeah, so he's, he had to do a gig in Vegas. He, want, he wanted his wife to go with him because he thought he was going to cheat, and she said, fuck you. No. Cue the haunting guitar music. That's right. Now you're going to go to Las Vegas. And we're thinking that she's not going to go with you. What do you think is going to happen? I think this such a giant mistake. Tell me about that. It's well, fake. in four days, I will not have had a drink in six months. I, I'm sure you're all aware, but I take a pill called Anabuse. What that does essentially is turn alcohol to formaldehyde on contact. If you took one in the same day as drinking, you'll definitely go to the ER. You could die. I switched them with aspirin three weeks ago. I haven't taken Anabuse in three weeks. We're taking uh, bare aspirin. So not only can I drink, I most likely won't get a headache. What the hell is that? Who's he trying to trick himself? <laughs> yeah. Wow. That you he switched him. it with the aspirin? Yeah, I don't. I don't. <laughs> this, this whole angle, I don't get. Right. He's tricking himself. It's like, well, then why don't you or stop does she doing? Dish out the, the pills to him. I'm completely aware of how fucked up I'm. Right. I am. Everything that I'm doing. Well, then stop doing what it. What the hell is that? What is that know. about? Are you setting yourself up for a drink? Because this is the deal breaker in your relationship. The way you're kind of flirting with danger. If you get busted with your pants down somewhere other than home again, that, you know, we got a deal breaker. There's Set part up. of me that says, I can do this. I can go to Las Vegas, do my job, and come home to my family. What is he doing? And there's another part that says, well, if you confess your dishonesty, you're being honest, therefore hypocritical. Oh, no, here's the deal. That's what's given you permission your whole life with her. He's been drunk. It hasn't been him. It's been the alcohol. So now it looks like you're sober. If you slept with somebody, man, she's out of there unless she found out that you switched three weeks ago. How freaking clever is that, Danny? Bobby and Anthony, the virus is spreading.